Hello, everyone, and welcome to Escape from Dino Island at Gauntlet Community Open Gaming. Uh, my name is Mike, and I will be your GM. A um, little bit about the Gauntlet. Uh, the Gauntlet is an online gaming community. We've been around for several years now. Um, I've been a member since 2018, and I've been jamming with them for about two years. Um, we run a monthly open calendar. Um, it's free to play, free to join, free to play. Uh, we run about 100 games a month of various sorts. We focus on indie games, story games, and and uh, OSR games. So um, you know, we do a lot of Powered by the Apocalypse. We do a lot of um, you know, we do a lot of Trophy. We do a lot of uh, other other indie games. You're not going to see a lot of D and D. You're not going to see a lot of you know Call of Cthulhu. That's kind of you know not not really our thing. Nothing, no shade on those games, but that's not what this, co this, this community focuses on. Uh, we also have a podcast network. Um, and we also, and for those who wish to join our Patreon, you would get advanced, uh, advanced access to the gaming calendar. Um, and then, then there's another tier. Uh, we publish a mostly monthly gaming magazine called Codex. And one of the other Patreon tiers gets you, uh, uh, gets you a subscription to that. Um, about six months after publication, uh, Codex is also available for purchase on Drive-Thru RPG. That's the Gauntlet. Um, this is Gauntlet Community Open Gaming, which is, uh, we do three or sometimes four a year. Um, it's a weekend where we just kind of open up our calendar for everyone to give, give people a chance to see what gaming with a gauntlet is like. Um, so welcome everyone. I'm, gl I'm glad you're here. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I've been playing tabletop role-playing games for a very long time. I started back in the 80s with AD&D First Edition. Um, in the 80s, I played a lot of that. Also played a lot of Champions. In the 90s, I mostly switched to GURPS and Champions and um, Amber Diceless Role-Playing. In the aughts, I mostly played D&D Third Edition and Call of Cthulhu. And in the teens, I played a lot of Pathfinder. Um, I fell into the indie games pool uh, in, I want to say, 2015. And um, that indie games kind of broke my brain in a good way. And it's kind of it's kind of hard to go back to, uh, I, I'm finding it hard to go back to trad systems, although we still have a toe in the Pathfinder community. Um, so that's me. Oh, and my, uh, my name is Mike. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, let's go around. Let's just go around the table. And if you want to say a few words about yourself um, and um, let us know if you've played with the Gauntlet before. Um, and um, the game we're playing is Powered by the Apocalypse. And let us know if you've ever played either Escape from Dino to Island or PBTA games. And if not, that's cool. Um, why don't we go clockwise around as I have you on my gallery view. So David, would you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, my name is David MK. And I am a long long time ish member of the gauntlet community uh i haven't played with the group in a while due to work commitments uh i have played a variety not very many but a variety of powered by the apocalypse games this is my first escape from dino island adventure i'm really looking forward to it uh and yeah i'm i'm an amateur designer and and a big sort of cheerleader for anyone dipping their toes in this. I also have played Amber uh, off and on for 30 years. <laughs> so uh, I, I applaud your your uh, interest in that. But anyone here, I'm, I'm really glad that you're joining us for the first time and that you're, you're trying out these other games that may not get as much press. So welcome. Thanks, David. Um, Sam, would you introduce yourself? Sean, yeah. Um, so my name is Sean. I live in Florence, Italy. I am a longtime gamer, I guess, relative, you know, not not to everyone, but I started uh, in the 90s. Yeah, with uh, AD&D Second Edition. And I, I remember going to Gen Con when I was 17 years old, sort of, you know, changed my life. It was a kind of like eye-opening experience uh, when I was quite young. So I was pretty much committed to gaming from then on. Uh, I took a pretty sizable break, though, in the early 2000s. So, of course, I played a lot of traditional games, D&D, um, &D, Rifts, Heroes, um, some GURPS, uh, you know, I would say the more traditional systems and only recently have I gotten into the kind of less traditional games, 
PBTA. I've never actually played a game that's um, powered by the apocalypse. I've read many, I've seen many. I know, of course, that it's quite popular. Um, so it'll be a kind of interesting first jump into the into the system and see its virtues and its vices. Um, I this is my also my first time playing in a gauntlet game. I've lurked on the forums for a long time. I've kind of I've seen the the open gaming kind of weekend, and I've you know uh, I've I've longed to sort of get in a session, and then this session opened up, uh, and I thought you know like it would be really fun. To, to to get into a story that I had never really thought about, you know, dipping my toes into, which is, you know, the sort of more traditional Jurassic Park um, Escape from Dino Island setup. So I decided, yeah, it was sort of a good opportunity to sort of um, see the PBATA system and, uh, you know, get a better understanding of what Gauntlet was all about. So I am thrilled to be here. Thanks for having us, Mike. I'm super, super excited for it. Well, I'm super excited to have a newbie to the gauntlet and a newbie to end to uh, and for me to be your uh, your intro to Powered by the Apocalypse Gaming. Um, I hope you like it. Um, yeah. Very cool. Gonna Welcome. Tori, would you introduce yourself? Yes, yeah, so I'm Tori. I'm also uh, a newbie to the gauntlet. This is my first gauntlet game. Um, I have a lot of friends who play and they've uh, like Cass has been saying, oh, come to gauntlet, come to gauntlet. So uh, finally set up for a bunch of games. Uh, this weekend, so I'm really excited. Uh, I also have not played Powered by the Apocalypse. Um, I played a bunch of spinoffs, um, but not anything specifically Powered by the Apocalypse, so I'm excited. I got into gaming pretty late. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I did it when I was an adult, so um, I'm also uh, apparently quite younger than a lot of you. Uh, so I wasn't around in the eighties. <laughs> I would say, I mean, it's, I think it's better when you're an adult. I remember playing when I was quite young and it's certainly, it's not, um, it doesn't really match up. I would say the storytelling was a, a lot, a lot, a lot more infantile, <laughs> a lot, a lot more juvenile. Very, very true. Very true. Yeah. Well, well, welcome everyone. Uh, it's uh, it's it's cool to have some uh, some new people to the gauntlet, and um, I really I, I really hope you enjoy yourself this morning. Okay, um, Escape from Dino Island. Um, let's 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 talk a little bit about about this game. Um, so before we actually get going, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the safety practices that we're going to be using for this um, for this session. Uh, the first thing I like to start with is called um, a CATS discussion. CATS is um, sort of like it's, it's, a, it's a formalized elevator pitch of what the game is, just to make sure that everyone's on the same page here. CATS stands for Concept, Aim, Tone, and Subject Matter. So the concept of this game, kind of what it says on the box, Escape from Dino Island. Um, you are a bunch of people. It's You're a bunch of people that are on an island that's got dinosaurs on it. And you can't get off, and um, you need to escape from Dino Island. It's more or less Jurassic Park, the role-playing game. Not necessarily the same concept. Uh, we'll figure out what the concept is, um, what's, or like what, what the actual situation is. But the concept is, you know, you're a bunch of normal people on an island infested with dinosaurs, and it's really dangerous, and there's going to be a lot of peril, and hopefully a lot of fun. The aim of this of this game is, you know, as as with any as with any uh, role-playing game, the aim is to tell an interesting story. And we'll see once we get into um, discussion of the rules of the game, uh, this game has built-in storytelling mechanics that are baked right into the game. So we're gonna start with not knowing a whole lot about our characters. And as we, uh, so the aim is to like learn about these characters um, and you know, learn about the situation and to you know, tell an interesting and compelling and um, you know, complete story about these characters and, and this situation. The tone of this game, um, action adventure. Um, if I were gonna give it a movie rating, this is gonna, gonna be PG-13. Um, I'm gonna try not to dwell on gore or, you know, I'm not gonna try to, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not going to dwell on the gore or the horror. This is going to be like the action adventure. Yeah, there's going to be scary stuff, but this isn't going to be a this is going to be a horror movie. Again, I'm going I'm going to shoot for the tone of something like one of the Jurassic Park movies. You know, they, you know, definitely some suspense, definitely some tension, definitely a lot of action. Um, but yeah, we're not going to you know if someone you know if someone gets attacked by the dinosaur, you know, we're going to like you know we're probably going to cut away. We're not going to have you know we're, we're, I'm not going to you know describe like you know viscera and gore flying around because you know who needs that. 
And uh, subject matter, uh, touched that a bit on tone. Um, so yeah, this is um, dinosaurs. So we're gonna have some, you know, we're gonna have, um, you know, uh, you know, we're gonna have dino heavy, uh, gonna have dino heavy action. Um, he'll probably end up being chased by dinosaurs or running away from dinosaurs or trying to sneak past. Um, Depending on the setup, you may we may be encountering encountering human or possibly non other non-human adversaries. Um, again, we'll figure that out once we figure out what the situation is um, in game. Um, but yeah, there's so I'm going to try to go for you know you know introduction you know conflict and then um, and then a and then a good hopefully a good exciting conclusion. That's. You know, that's the elevator pitch. That's the cat's discussion of this game. Does anyone have any questions before we move on? Okay. Here, I think. think. Yeah. Very cool. Um, the next thing we should talk about is uh, the safety practices that we're going to be using for this game. So does everyone have a link to the character keeper? Okay. If you could click over to the last tab, which is safety and resources. Um, oh, yeah. Wow. Well, tabs. If you click over to the last tab, safety and resources, um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, about these. So, wow. um, so one uh, so one kind of general practice about online gaming. This is is um, basically uh, if you're not you know if if you're not talking, um, mute your microphone just so that we don't accidentally cat pick up you know like the sound of a truck driving by or your or dog barking in the background. Um, and un obviously unmute yourself when uh, when you have the spotlight or you need to interject something. Um, that's more of a online game practice thing. Uh, safety tools or safety safety practices as uh, I guess the, the phrase is evolving. So um, we're a bunch of strangers that are getting together to play a game over the internet. And the object of this is to have is to have a good time. You know, we're doing this to have fun. All of us have di have different sets of life experiences, and, um, and what may be absolutely okay for me might be a very sore subject for you. Um, we're, so we're going to be playing with a number of safety safety practices because um, when we engage in role playing games, we're you know we're making ourselves emotionally vulnerable, and with these safety practices that we have that we're going to be talking about, it's a way to mitigate the danger to make sure that no one or to, or to help prevent uh, anyone from stepping on uh, a stepping on a proverbial landmine um, and and causing emotional harm to each other, because each of us individually is more important than this game we're playing together. Uh, we're going to be using a layered safety practice approach. Um, so the first one uh, is called open door, and this is about our individual personal comfort. Open door is really simple. It just means anyone can come and go from this game as they please. Um, you know, if we get into this game and you decide that this game is not for you, it is absolutely fine to say, you know what, folks, this game ain't for me. I'm gonna, um, you know, I'm gonna check out. Hope to see you again in the future. 100% okay. Um, anyone can call a break at any time. Um, anyone who needs to step away for any reason may do so and come on back. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you do, in, uh, we would ask the courtesy if you're going to step away and not come back, if you let us know so we don't like wait for you. Um, but again, if something comes up, you know, that, that totally happens. You know, if someone comes to your door or your phone or your landline rings or, you know, you need to take a bio break, come go as you please. Um, and that's, that's open door in a, that's open door in a nutshell. Anyone have any questions on open door? The second tool we're going to be using is called lines and veils. And lines and veils is a proactive safety practice where each of us, you know, we all hopefully know ourselves and know what we're comfortable and less comfortable with. Um, and lines and veils is a practice where we can call out specific subject matters that we may find problematic or we just don't want to deal with. Um, and so a line is a is a subject matter that we just aren't going to bring up. We're not going to have it in the game. It's not going to be there. If it, I'm not 
I'm not running a prepared adventure. If it if it had appeared in the adventure, and uh, it'd be up to the GM to make sure that they that they remove it. But you know, a line is a subject where it's just not going to happen in the game. We're we're not going to you know we're not going to see it at all. A veil is a subject matter that we may acknowledge occurs in the world. We may see signs that it has happened. We may you know talk about that sort of thing may be happening in the past, but it's not something we're gonna dwell on. It's not something that's gonna happen on camera, and it's certainly not something that's going to happen to a player character on screen. When it comes up, we'll, you know, if, if, that, if a veiled subject comes up, we, we need to treat it with a great deal of respect um, if we wanna bring it up at all. Um, and we won't dwell on it. You know, we may cut, a, we, you know, we may cut away, we may fast forward the scene, uh, we may fade to black. Um, and finally, there's a third column, which is ask first, which is, um, it's a subject which may be okay in some contexts and may not be okay in others. So um, we'll need to step back into the metagame and have a discussion about it, uh, about this subject matter before we introduce it. I've got a list on this, uh, I've got a list on this page of a number of possibly problematic subject matters. Um, if folks want to take a few moments to uh, check things off. Um, I am going to pause the recording while we do that. Okay, we have our safety, we have our lines and veils recorded. Um, I've got them on a stick note that's floating on the top of my screen so that I don't, uh, so that I don't forget them. Um, next tool we want, the next safety practice we're going to talk to is called the X card. Uh, the X card is a reactive uh, safety practice. And that's when we, when, when other tools were not sufficient, uh, we can invoke, we can bring up the X card. When you invoke the X card, um, you're telling us that there's something happening in the game that you're not comfortable with. And you can invoke the X card for any reason whatsoever. Uh, you can say X card, you can say, hey, folks, pause. Uh, or you can, you know, we're on video, you can make like an X um, gesture on camera. When you invoke the X card, that's you're telling us that there's something happening at the game table that you're uncomfortable with, and you need, to, and we need to, and we need to make a change. That can be something in game. Um, it can be something really mundane, like I've introduced an NPC that is the name of like the bully that used to beat you up when you were in third grade, and you absolutely hate that name. It's this NPC doesn't exist. We can change their name, no problem. Um, it could be something more serious, like, oh, you know, this is a subject matter I should have, I should have put a line on. Um, let's, um, you know, let, let's line this. Um, okay, we'll, we'll do that. It could be something interpersonal, whether someone's consistently getting your name wrong, or um, is, using, is using the wrong pronoun with you, or someone is consistently talking over you. X card, we'll have, um, you know, we'll have, we'll, we'll have a discussion. Um, about that as well. Or if you just, you really don't like the direction that the story seems to be going, um, X card, we'll, you know, we can always uh, rewind the scene, replay things out um, in a different manner. Um, that, that, that's really it. You never have to tell us why you want to X card something, but we do need to know what it is that we need to, that we need to change. Um, any questions on the X card? Awesome. This isn't so much a safety practice. It's more of a practical thing. Um, it, it's, unfortunately, it has come up a couple of times. And that is, um, if for some reason something happens um, that I, you know, either my internet connection cuts out or I freeze and don't come back, or I look, or I look worriedly off the, off the, uh, like, like, like uh, away from the screen, take off my headset and, and step away uh, without saying anything, that might indicate that there's something going on here, um, whether I've lost power or lost internet or, you know, um, or, you know, or something, something weird happened in my house. Um, if I go away and don't come back for 10 minutes, assume something's come up and that the game is over. I wish I could say that's never happened, but I was running a I was running a game at an online convention last year, and literally, um, 
there was a car accident up at the corner uh, that knocked over that knocked over a telephone pole, and I lost it, I lost electricity and phone and internet. You know these things happen. Um, I was able to, you know, and it took like you know took like ten minutes for me to like get uh, to get a phone connect to get a uh, cellular connection to let people know that hey sorry game's over. Hopefully it won't happen, but you know if I go away and I don't come back for ten minutes and I don't let you know otherwise. Assume the game is over and take the rest of your day back. Hopefully it won't happen, but I did want to call that out. Are there any questions about our safety practices before we go on? Awesome. Um, one other thing I did want to talk about are breaks. Uh, I'm going to call a break at generally at the top of every hour. Um, and again, anyone can use open door to call a break at any time. In fact, I'm going to use open door right now and call for a call for a really quick break. I'll be back in two minutes and I'm going to pause the recording. And I'm back. Um, okay, let's um, let's figure out who our characters are. Um, on our um, on our character keeper, if people could click back over to the PCs tab, um, let's figure out what playbooks people might be interested in playing. Um, I will call out one thing, and that is there is the kid playbook, um, which is, you know, which is the young child. That's you know, if for like in like in Jurassic Park, that was um, uh, what was his name? Um, like the the rich guy's like niece, niece and nephew. Um, it's a fun playbook, but we do have a line. Uh, we did put a line on harm to children, so. Um, you know, uh, I'm I'm so if so if that's okay, um, we'll just we'll just take the kid off of that unless people really want to play and um and, and want to lead into that. Um, it, it, it's up to you guys. Um, but with a but with a lot but with a veil on um with a veil on harm to children, it probably would be easiest to just take the kid playbook out of consideration unless people unless someone really has a strong desire to. I'll I'll leave that all up to you. Go ahead. <sighs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that one out. Um, so there are uh, one, two, three, four. That leaves that leaves uh, six playbooks. We've got three players. So um, anyone have any? And you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the recording again just because character creation is not particularly interesting to uh, to watch. So uh, let's pause and I'll return once we figured out who our characters are. Okay, we're back. We have chosen. Um, we have chosen our characters. You know what? I'm going to pause again because we need to now fill things out. Okay, we're back. Um, I've done a little bit of an explanation on how Powered by the Apocalypse game, how the game mechanics work, and um, a little, and we fleshed out our characters a wee bit more. Um, so we've got three characters. We're going to have uh, uh, David will be playing the engineer. Sean will be playing the hunter. And Tori is going to be playing the paleontologist. <clears throat> um, let's figure out what the situation is. Um, do we have names for, uh, looks like Tori's got a name. Do we have names for our hunter and our engineers yet? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a few more minutes to think about it, we'll, uh, we, we can figure that out. If you could hop over to the island in situation, let's figure out what's going on. So on the mainland, we've all, you know, we are, you know, we are all coming to this, to this island together. Why are we all together? And we can pick off of this list or if someone has another idea that's, if we, if someone has another idea, that's absolutely fine. Uh, in fact, some of the better games I've played were uh, were different high concepts that weren't that weren't from this list. Um, but any of these any of these appeal to you, or um, or does someone have another idea? No. <clears throat> no, you're invited. In I mean, I feel like flipping the flipping the script is is sort of choosing to be criminals. I would say, or someone with more um, nefarious. I don't know. Uh, you know, 
motives I, to go to the island. But I've had, I've had. Oh, Tori, you're about to say something. I have an idea. Mm. What if the engineer is a sound engineer, and we're shooting a TV show? I'm laughing because you're you're the third group that suggested that. <laughs> And it has always worked beautifully. So we're like Netflix or something coming in to shoot shoot a series. Or like National Geographic. Oh, okay. So something more <laughs> serious. All right. Perfect. Oh, National Geographic does a ton of Not terrible stuff. documentaries. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like any of the like Croc Hunter, any of the kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just the history channel that that went off the rails mm. <laughs> alas no <laughs> alas no nat geo has definitely taken a uh, definitely oh, taken a page from them i'm so sad it probably <laughs> improves viewership but it's sad it's like i remember when i remember that when the discovery channel actually did nature documentaries and not yeah. when nature attacks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm fine with any of that. <laughs> I'm I'm into it if that's what we want to do. Yeah, why not? <laughs> hey, you're a, you're a, you're a film crew. I love it. Mm. Okay, why are we all together? We are here. film crew. What's are we the there of- to get maybe something specific on film though, like some kind of rare dinosaur? I don't know. Some, some sort you- of like unicum. Well, do we have like? Do we have like the full crew? Or are we there in advance? Like, is there going to be a director and other NPCs? Or, like, is Tori, what's your character's name? Are you like the lead person on here? Or are you just a consultant? Um, my idea is, is partially based in, in real life. Oh. Because Lindsay Azano is a, is a paleontologist. She launched a real real-time social media platform called Expedition Live. And on Expedition Live, if you go to the website, it says, the dueling dinosaurs are here. <laughs> and that's their top news and upcoming events right now. Wow, I love it. So, so, what's, what's, so I love that. What's, so what's, what's the name of your show? Um, I don't know. Dino time, dino. <laughs> I know. All dinos considered. Yeah, all dinos considered. <laughs> what else could it oh, be? Oh wait, uh, wait. In the expeditions, drawer. there's one called Mad X. Mad X. Yeah. M A A D E X. Tyrannosaurus. American Alliance for Dinosaur Exploration, but it's hmm. Mad X. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love it. But yeah, so let's yeah, what, what like so so what's what's the name of, what's what's the name of the show that you're shooting? I thought it was gonna be Mad X. Mad X? Let's go with Mad right. X. Mad sure. X. Sure. Mad X. Catchy. Why not? Okay. How do you spell that? M A A. At least A-A. two A's. D E S. Mad X. <clears throat> Fantastic. And the show is about uh, and, and and it's it's a show about um, like paleontology and dinosaur expeditions and that sort of thing. I'm just I'm just just want to get a little I almost feel about I this. almost feel like we're crossing into like um, the those groups that look for ghosts like we're looking for like the rare conspiracy sort of dinosaur that doesn't exist sort of thing like dino hunters like absolutely yeah i think we need to be looking for like the uh, some kind of rare species of tyrannosaurus like the albino tyrannosaurus rex or right, right. something that, that like, kind of has some yeah that like spits acid or some weird conspiracy exactly okay. yeah are you is this is this sort of like a cryptid thing where you're looking for, you know, where you've got rumors of real dinosaurs and we're going to check them out? Like, oh, well, that's just, or or is it, or you're actually going into like do to do digs in exotic places? I'm just trying to get an idea of the, of the gist of your show. Like, like how legit do you want it? This how legit is this show? 
I like the cryptid idea simply because it kind of allows us to be a little bit more fringe, strange, maybe low budget production, you know? Again, we're kind of breaking in perhaps to some place we're not supposed to be. It's not like we're invited. You know, naturally, yeah. geographic. Yeah, I, like, I wonder I like, how often. Yeah. Yeah, I like the idea that we'd have no permits or anything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That we're kind of that we're on the wrong side of the law, maybe. Sound good to you, Tori? Yeah. Okay. Like we, we're definitely expecting some sort of resistance, whether it's animal or personal, because we brought along a hunter. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I mean, you know, you're um, going to a, you're going to a, you know, you're going to an unchart, you're going to an uninhabited island that's, you know, who knows what's there. I, I feel like we would have potentially a little confessional moments too. <laughs> like, I can't believe I'm on this thing. <laughs> like a flashlight. I'm not getting paid moment. enough to do this. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I oh, owe, there you go. I have to make alimony payments, and that's why I'm here. Sort of oh thing. yeah, totally. Like it's a yeah, like the real world or something. We're in another booth, yeah. The real lost world. Yeah, the real lost world. <laughs> I feel like that's amazing. That maybe that's the name of our show. Maybe it's Mad X colon the real lost world. Season two. We don't know what happened to season one, people, because all that was left was found footage. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, so I'm going to hand out some rumors. Each of you has heard something about this, uh, this mysterious island. And let me go to our dice roller. Oh, I never linked a dice roller. Well then. Let me put a link to a shared dice roller on the... Um, character sheet or on the, uh, on the sheet. This is going to be on the safety and resources tab. I'm putting a link to uh, roll dice with to um, I've got a we've got a room on roll dice with friends, uh, which is just a really simple um, just a really simple online dice roller. Um, let me pop that into the chat window as well. Um, one thing about this is uh, there's a name field at the top of the page. Please put your characters, please put your character's name in there just so because uh, the default is Dallas Dice Roller. Oh, one other interesting thing for the for those who haven't played PPTA games before. Uh, in general, the GM doesn't roll dice, with the sole exception of sometimes the GM will roll uh, will roll on tables, but. Uh, the actual game mechanics of the game, um, all dice are player focused. So in general, the in general the GM will not roll. In general, the GM doesn't touch the dice. I am, however, going to roll on a table. Okay, so two um, characters' names here. To Jacques, our Jacques, our engineer. I think I think he goes by his last name. Oh, does he? I th yeah, it's like Swan. Swan. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's he's from Canada, and uh, he's he's probably done a lot of documentaries and concerts and things up there, and is probably officially retired from whatever day job he had, and this is like his passion job. Got it. And I bet, I bet, like his grandkid convinced him to join up with this, this group because dinosaurs it. are cool. So the rumor that you heard, um, so rumor that you heard, um, is that, um, you're having drinks with a friend. You were having drinks with a friend of you, with another with, with a friend of yours at the bar, and I'll let you define define who this friend is and how you know sure. them. Yeah. Um. And they had been to this, they had been to this island before, and they're telling you, they're telling you, there's, you know, there's like literal dinosaurs on this on, on this island. 
I mean, I saw literal living dinosaurs. You got to take the show there. <clears throat> um, and he was like really drunk out of his gourd. But the funny thing was, the day after you got this rumor, um, your friend kind of disappeared. Hmm. And I'll let you define like who this friend was and how they might have known about this. Yeah. Do you want me to state it or do you want me to hold on? If you want, if you want to, if you want to mull that over, um, if you want to come up with a story on your own and then um, if, if you want to like think about it and then, you know, it, it may come up in play or, okay. um, or cool. however we want to do this. Uh, let's see. So the next rumor will be to uh, our hunter, Roger Bigsby. And I'm just going to roll it again. Got rumor three. You had heard that no human had ever set foot on this island before until last year. And I'll let you define. I like that you... because it kind of, I, I want him to be like a little bit more skeptical that dinosaurs actually exist. I want him to kind of be, you know, more on the side that like, if, he, if he's a sort of the hunters, I sort of imagine him to be, or maybe he's not utterly, you know, totally convinced these things are here. Maybe he'll be more surprised when he sees them. And Lindsay, you have heard that you've heard a rumor th about this island that um, reefs and currents make it nearly impossible to land a, to land a, uh, make it nearly impossible to get to this island by boat. Those are the rumors that you have heard about Dino Island. <clears throat> so, um, let's talk about let's talk about arrival. Um, how did you get to the island? Um, I'll Tori. What what mode of transport did you use to get to this island? Well, we'll probably go by plane. Uh, we have an approximate, uh, like how far away is it from a mainland? Um, well, that is like, um, what, what would be most interesting? And also like, where do we, where do we want this island to be? I'm kind of imagining it's, it's like an isolated island in the Pacific somewhere and maybe the nearest island is not I, pretty far. I, but... I have a suggestion for where the island might be. Somewhere. Uh, off the charts in the Antarctic Circle area. <clears throat> there are there are mostly uninhabited um, archipelagos. Like because no in no the, one would expect Ocean. no one expects supposedly <laughs> cold blooded animals to be living so close to a pole. So do you want it to be like? Do you think it might be Arctic or yeah? Like just. That's like, kind of fun. I mean, only because again, it kind of flips the script on the standard like Dino Island running through like I don't know, lots of different vegetation. We do have a paleontologist, so clearly we want something for. <laughs> I mean, in the uh, real the character to be able to no, do. No, but like but, there could there could be like uh, thermal yeah, greenhouses. Or... Yeah, yes. yeah, green like giant like giant domed civilizations Vol of dinosaurs. Volcan yeah, I mean, no, or it's or you yeah. know it's volcan it's vol it's volcanic and there's like yeah. Hot or, springs all over the or, place that makes it. Or there's like a um a almost permanent sort of like gap in the in the atmosphere allowing greenhouse gases to build. I don't know, whatever. But it's in the it's like or in the southern in the ocean. Earth's crust. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's an island. In the, so it's an island in the southern ocean. I like it. I mean, there are there is a there are some real. Um, I know there's uh they're owned by the French. There's a Kerguelen. There's Kerguelen Island, which are, um. You know, it's like it's like it's like 50 degrees south so it's not so you know, it's, so it's got a climate kind of like canada um 
you're cool. I speak it's French. Not, it's we'll not it's not it's not icy it's not icy icy, but it's it's you know it's yeah. it's temperate it's temperate to the cold side and it's very very difficult to get to. But yeah, I like the idea that it's you know this is a cold island. It's not a not a tropical island. Very cool. So you approach by plane. I love it. Well. So that's the that's the question is if it's really close to the mainland we could take a helicopter and land right on the island but if it's not close to the mainland then like we can't land a plane on just dense vegetation so we'd have to jump out of a plane I or mean a isn't that that's, a, yeah. that's or not a, preferable or it's a, sea a seaplane seaplane <laughs> seaplane is like nice con, con which also guys. which also can't go very far from the mainland so we'd probably have to take some type of military <laughs> boat, like military <laughs> ship, into the middle of the ocean and then take a helicopter from there. Are we thinking like uh, a former Cold War submarine? Or are you thinking like just like a normal like uh, like like a normal aircraft carrier type? Wow. So you've got so basically you've got a small so. Um... I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't like own the ship. No, we no, no, no. Passage with the yep. ship. Okay, so you've got, so you've got a, you've got a large, you've got a largest, maybe former, formerly owned, like, that's probably wasn't a U.S. ship. It was probably, oh, it's like a, it's a decommissioned Russian helicopter carrier. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, it was like built in the seventies. <laughs> I love that idea. It's so like who, things are falling off. Been, it's all rusty. It's been decommissioned, <laughs> and it's like this. It's like you know, and you've got this like big, like like fifty year old, uh, like giant Soviet like troop transport helicopter, and that takes <laughs> off, and it's just belching smoke behind it. Who You're like who like knows knows who's their contact with this thing? Like it's not me. Who who has the the way in on this <laughs> i feel like it must be some kind of russian billionaire maybe who set us up with this i don't know i mean you bring or... me head to mount on wall <laughs> exactly i love that that's amazing yeah or you yeah. know or i mean you know if you're working for a if, if you're working for a for a film for a film company or for a or for like a second tier uh for like a second tier cable company you know they put it out to bid and this is the lowest bidder <laughs> such an environmental disaster all right i love it this okay so great. you so you so you land so you so you're you're dropped off by helicopter and um you're dropped off by helicopter i love it okay um so i'm just looking at the time um i usually like to call for a break at the top of an hour i usually like to try to get the um i usually try to get character creation done and, and get the situation so we can come back from our first break and play but it's about ten after. Why don't we call it? Why don't we call a break here? Uh, we'll come back. We'll finish the situation. Then we'll start playing earnest. Sound good, folks? Okay, awesome. Let's take a ten minute break. Um, I've got um, I've got twelve minutes after. So let's come back at uh, twenty two minutes after. Okay, fantastic. See you in ten. And we're back. Okay, let's see. We were going over the situation. So we have decided that um, the island is in the Southern Ocean. Uh, it's not exactly Arctic, but it's still pretty cold. Um, you have approached the island by a uh, by a decommissioned Soviet military uh, by a decommissioned Russian military vessel. Um, and were landed on the island via a like big old Russian like troop troop transport helicopter that dropped you off and then flew back to the ship. On the island, you quickly encountered your first dinosaur. Um, Mr. Bigsby, describe the situation. Where were you and what kind of dinosaur did you see? Well, I presume we're coming up offshore, possibly, because I'm trying to think, you know, where the helicopter would have sort of landed. You know, coming in, possibly on the shore. We jump off. We hit some kind of like low trees. I kind of wave everyone in, you know, with my 
uh, tranquilizer sort of gone out front, I guess we sort of, you know, hustle up into the, into the shadows of these kind of like large evergreens. Um, and perhaps sort of right there, I see not a large dinosaur, not, you know, nothing substantial, no T-Rex or, you know, Triceratops, but, um, something small, uh, you know, a small little, I don't know, I'm not even, I should be an expert in dinosaurs, but maybe my, maybe my, my hunter is not quite an expert, uh, something small, just sort of off in the distance, kind of like jumping on a, um, uh, jumping on a, on a sort of broken log, perhaps something that we see sort of skitter off into the distance. And Dr. Zano, how did you feel when you, uh, how did you feel when you saw a, a real living dinosaur? Well, I wasn't told, well, I wasn't told that there were real dinosaurs and I don't think I'm going into this expecting like real dinosaurs. It's, it's more like we're going and expecting some kind of, I don't know, dinosaur offshoot <laughs> that evolved, you know, from the millennia since dinosaurs existed. Uh, So I think it's my eyes playing tricks on me. And I'm like, was that a dinosaur? Oh no, it's not a dinosaur, but that might be what we're hunting. So I think I saw what we're hunting, not literally hunting, but like hunting for the show. Uh, so I let everyone know, oh, keep your eyes and ears open. I think, I think I saw it. Awesome. And Mr. Swan, what was oddly familiar about this thing that may very well be a dinosaur that you saw? What, what was oddly familiar about it? I'm going to say that um, Pete, the one who told me about this island, described the plumage, the like, um, what is that? I can't remember the term for it, but basically, like, it's sort of like a, uh, like sparkles. Like, there's an iridescence to the plumage, and I was and I like caught it in the light, like this sort of like rainbow shadow across it, and I'm like just sort of gasping with my mouth open. Fantastic. Soon after you encountered this, your first dinosaur, something went terribly wrong. Um, why don't we, why don't we come back to, well, uh, why, don't, why don't we do the same order we did before? Um, so Mr. Bigsby, um, what was your first hint that something was off? So we're trying to find this sort of cryptid singular dinosaur, possibly kind of albino T-Rex or something of the sort. And our first hint that something was off was when we began to hear noises, let's say at the edges, um, something lurking perhaps, something following us. Uh, a sound or a kind of, you know, set of like chatters, something strange, of course, that nothing of, a, you know, none of us are, are familiar with or really have heard before, but something that sort of slowly start to build um, in sort of, uh, you know, succession, right? Something clearly um, out just beyond the horizon that we can't see. So a noise, I guess, would, I would say, it's the thing that has set us off. Okay, some some kind of like some kind of dis disturbing noises off. Nice. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Swan, who did you instinctively look to, and why? Uh, 
in when this disturbing noise yeah when the, when this yeah when you when you first when you first notice hmm. these disturbing when you when you realize that some something's going wrong here yeah if i'm like the sound engineer i'm definitely capturing it um uh, i'm probably torn between like um dr zano because she's the expert right and uh mr bigsby because he might keep us safe <laughs> so i probably would like turn to both of them like and say what was that and dr zano what made you realize that you were in serious trouble here It's got to be the poop. It's always got to be the poop. <laughs> you know, you come along and you, you find, and it's not, it's not any animal that you know of, but as an archaeologist, you know, you've, you've dug a lot of it up and you've found a lot of it embedded in rocks and she's recognized it. And this specific formation of poop should be extinct. It should not be created by living creatures and this poop is warm. <clears throat> and there's a lot of it. <laughs> are, are, are you saying this and, it, and it's, are, are you making a distinction that this is clearly something big and something clearly carnivorous? No. No, nope. not specifically uh, related to the chattering that's been following us. Um, this is uh, the excrement from the beans that uh, are, are living around here and are producing the chattering. Um, and that that chattering is most likely velociraptors uh, hunting us and I have, I have a question. Would it make sense? And this is kind of like potentially adding on to what Tori just said. If we found some clothing or human thingies, I'm not saying pieces of body parts, but like something in this poop, would that be too weird? Does that sound like a does that sound like a cool thing we want to add to the story, folks? I, I'm cool to stay with that. Away from, or do we want to stay away from that? I'm cool with it. I think, yeah, uh, you know, human hand or something that looks, uh, yeah, <laughs> a little more dangerous. I thought one of the rumors was like no one had come here for at least a year. That was one of the rumors. Looks like that rumor was false. <laughs> yeah, that, that could also <laughs> be true. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe, maybe they just found some trash and ate it. So, um, I think I, I, I think I want to establish that. Um, so, this island is 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 temperate, but on the cold side. So, there are trees. Um, you know, it's kind of. I'm going to say it's probably. I'm, I'm just going to say just to just to emphasize that this is cold. It's it's actually mostly pine trees. Um, it's mostly conifers. At some point, you come you come through a ridge of trees and um, you see something that you weren't expecting, and that is um, there's there's a building on this island, and it looks like a very recent construction. It's um, kind of like a it's like a squat almost. Um, Almost looks like a bunker. Uh, it's like a squat concrete building um, with a metal roof. <clears throat> so you know that there are, you know, there's at least somebody's been on this island before, which is weird because you heard a rumor that there, if you heard a rumor that there hadn't been anyone on this island. Um, <clears throat> just, just establishing that there, there are facilities on this island. 
um, that you perhaps were not expecting to see. So now go okay. So we've uh, so we've established um, why you why you left. We had you know some stuff on the mainland. Um, we've established your arrival on the island. Now let's establish the situ the situation that you're in right now. Uh, you'll notice on that island and situation tab, uh, there is a link to the editable island map. So this is just straight out of the game. Um, you'll notice that the island map is divided into a bunch of different zones, and so so basically that that comes into that comes into play as you know basically as you move from one zone to another, you may be encountering different things. Um, it's a way that we can you know set pacing and. Get a, get a sense that you're like journeying across the island. <clears throat> um, so, um, and this map is editable, so uh, it's just a Google drawing. So you can, um, you know, you can put shape, you can put shapes or uh, or draw lines or something. Where did you, where did your helicopter land? I would imagine it was probably somewhere along the coast because, you know, the beaches were probably big enough for this. Was enough of a Expanse that the helicopter could land, but if the rest of it was forested, you probably couldn't land a chopper there. So where uh, where, where do you think you landed? Anyone has an Perhaps idea? Perhaps in that kind of like natural harbor. I don't know. The sort of like surrounded area. Sure. Middle middle right. I don't know. On the coast. So kind of like, so kind of like there was your landing site. Yeah, maybe, sure. Okay. <clears throat> um, and yeah, let's say that uh, I'll just say that's all still in the zone when you encountered a building. I'm just going to do a rectangle. Yeah, I'm just so which which direction were you going? Were you going toward the mountain? Were you going were you going north, south, east, or west from there? <clears throat> um, Anybody? I think just certainly inland. West, I mean, yeah. right? Yeah, it's west. Like I would imagine. Inland. Yeah. Sure. Toward the mountain. Yeah, this is where you saw that. This is where you saw that first building, and. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to say that, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so you come out of the forest and there's, I'm going to say there's kind of like a clearing um, that it's kind of, you know, it's kind of grassy with, with grassy, with kind of patchy grass. Um, you see this build, you see this like bunker in the distance and you also see that, um, the other thing that you that you saw that was unusual was when you came through the because when you realized that you perhaps were not alone on this island, uh, when you came out of the woods um, into this clearing that you clearly saw ahead of you, um, there's like a ten foot high chain link fence with razor wire across the top that's surrounding this like big, um, you know that that's surrounding this like big field, and you can see on the other side of it. That there's a big break in the that there's a big break in the fence. Um, so that's kind of where we are now. Um, we know uh, we need to establish a couple of more things. Uh, the first thing is you know of a way off this. You know of another way off this island. Um, what is it? Uh, I think the I, I think the I, I, looking from the list on the page, I think clearly the uh, I think the most obvious answer would be the helicopter that you arrived in. <clears throat> but I think we established it landed and then and then took off. So 
so like it would be a means to so like you basically would radio the heli that the way off would be you'd radio the helicopter and give you its and you know look it up on gps and tell it where you were and the helicopter would come in and pick you up Does that that makes sense okay that makes a ton of sense i i also love the idea though of i you know we had mentioned the submarine and i had this like idea of like a six person research submarine like floating off of the coast you know something like that a little also within the kind of like exaggerated okay. adventure line it Got was it. like repurposed from a former penguin study group or something yeah exactly so the research vessel you had uh it, it, you landed on this you landed there but there were also there's maybe there's another film crew that's also doing like under that's doing underwater research yeah they're like doing a disney documentary or something <clears throat> i love it okay so we know that there's another so we know that there's a research submarine that's in the area I like that. But there's a problem. We can't just leave. Um, I'm happy to pose one. Uh, you know, we can look at the list. And I think the I think I think maybe an obvious one is that um, now that you've come now that you've come a ways inland, uh, you've realized that your GPSs don't work, that something's something is jamming all your radio signals. You can't raise the helicopter on, you know, like your radios don't work. You can't raise the helicopter, your GPS, you can't get a signal from your GPS. So now that you're inland, you don't know how you're going to, you don't know how you're going to signal your helicopter. Sure. Could this manifest a little bit more in terms of like, maybe there's like a storm or something, you know, some kind of weather effects, you know, that's, that we see. Like whether it's a fog or, you know, also, even if it's like a solar flare where we see like something in the sky. I was also thinking, you know, the volcanoes, they create um, like yeah. volcanic ash, like yeah. fog. So like in Hawaii and whatnot, they have fog. So this idea that like maybe the, the volcano is a little bit more active and it's mm -hmm. kind of like creating a over layer of, I don't yeah. know, atmosphere. So we can't see or use our devices. Got it. Yep. And there's a mystery that needs solving. Um, and uh, you know, again, the, what, the obvious one, if we're if we're setting this up as um, if we're setting up the problem that you can't make you can't you can't signal your team, um, you know, the obvious mystery there is like, well, how why have we lost contact? What's what's caused this? The, does people like that, or people want to want to do something else? I mean, if we also leave, we're not going to get paid. True. <laughs> we, we haven't we haven't filmed our documentary yet. <laughs> Got it. Or you know, I'm I'm just looking down the list, and um, one of the one of the items on the list is what is the source of this strange signal that's this strange broadcast that's over overpowering your signals. So that that could be another means of, you know, there's some kind of there's some kind of like radio broadcasts coming from somewhere on the island that's oh, sure. jamming your signals. And that's why, that's why you can't signal. Does that I don't know. Yeah. And I don't on? know how dedicated um, Dr. Zano is to finding this um, besides pay. Like, I don't know how like passionate uh, the other two characters are for being here. Right. They might not want to leave till we get what we came for. And then there's three, and then there's just three, there's three truths about the island uh, that you don't know the answer to. And we're going to figure this out in play. And that is one, how are there, how are there dinosaurs on this island? Two, there's a man-made complex on this island. Who built it and what is its purpose? And three, the complex has fallen, maybe just now, or maybe quite some time ago. What happened? So those are kind of like the three baked in mysteries that are, that are part of the game. Okay. So we've established the problem. You, uh, we've we've established the situation. We've established the problem, and yeah, um, I guess we're going to start playing in earnest now. So you are. Uh, I think we've established your. You've just come out of the woods, and there's a like, ten foot high, heavily reinforced chain link fence, with razor wire across the top. Um, I'm just going to say, looking at it. I mean, you just know, Mr. Swan, um, you can tell it's wired and it's supposed to be, and 
it, it's wired to be an electrified fence. Um, but looking across the field, you can see basically on the opposite side of where you are, it looks like the fence, it looks like a big chunk, a big section of this fence has been broken open. So whatever may have been in the pen is no longer in the pen. Oh, it looks like a pen, not as, not well, as. Well, I mean, a, it's, when I say pen. Barrier. Well, um, it looks like, um, yeah, it looks like this is a pen, especially because I, I said it had like mm -hmm. razor wire at the top. The razor wire was angled inwards, you know, like, the, okay. you know, yep. so if you see, if you see those fences, you know, they've usually got like, uh, yep. like a projection going one way or the other that tells you like which, mm -hmm. which way they're defending on. It was, it was pointed in. So this looks like it was a fence that was holding something in rather than keeping something sure. out. Does, does it look like it was damaged from the inside out or from the outside in? Uh, you can tell from here. It looks like it looks like it was yeah something that was in the pen and managed to break to to break through the fence. And so it, it looks yeah. And is there an easy way to figure out if this the electricity is still active or not? Um, there's yeah, an be, easy way. <laughs> I was well, going to say there's besides touching it. <laughs> yeah, you can try to short it up by like throwing something at it or like you know yeah. like getting a stick and yeah because I don't want to be tossing it toward around. you know tossing yeah. it toward the fence to see you know to have it you know like lean partially on the fence and partially on the ground to see if it grounds yep. to see if it grounds out and it does not the electric the electrification does not seem to be active okay so the bunker is near this pen and something that was inside of it broke out so swan would probably you know for the sake of the audience have an external uh voice over <laughs> basically what could have done that? What could have broken out of this? Like, what would have been inside this pen? Are you, um, so are you wondering, are you, are you trying to determine I'm wondering the answer aloud. to that? I am wondering aloud to perhaps my companions who are experts in different kinds of animals that they might know. And then, so Bigsby, who goes by Biggs, will sort of like roll and, and sort of say, perhaps I should tell you about the time that I captured a bohemian warthog the size of three men. <laughs> Tripped nearly in front of me, practically going in my left leg. I had to tie it up with my one left hand. But I can't say this, this fence looks much larger than that. Dr. Zano, perhaps you have something to add. <laughs> How how big is the break in the fence? Um, it's pretty big. Uh, I'm gonna say it's probably at least like you know, it's probably more than five, less than ten feet wide. At how tall? Uh, well, the um, it looks like it looks like a section of the fence just got like like pushed over. Um, it's like a as you say, like a ten foot fence or something. Yeah, it was a ten foot. It was a ten foot fall ten yeah. tall fence that was that was uh, topped with topped with razor wire. Um, looks like a section of the fence has basically been pushed out. Um, you know, okay, like, but you know, the fence like, was like, only ten feet tall, so that's it's not that large. Right, like greyhounds can jump a six foot fence, no problem, but they usually don't break them down. Like, what could have done? Was it a Warthog? Was it like what kind of supposedly dinosaur could have done this? So you know the uh, you have established that the fence is no longer electrified. So mm -hmm. um, oh, getting through it, it would probably not be difficult. Is there dino poop inside? Um, let me take a quick look at the moves here. Uh, um, <laughs> Page three four. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for time. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm different, uh, different, different PBTA games have different yeah. mechanics for like looking around and noticing stuff. And I'm blanking on what the basic moves are for this like one. Lay so of just, the land just, or something. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, um, yeah, you're not in any immediate danger. So uh, there is a lay of the, there is a lay of the land move. When you and a companion take a quiet moment to get a good vantage point and orient yourself, Tell a story and then roll, roll plus clever. So someone, so who wants to do a lay of the land? I mean, 
I'll You'll do it. Disneyland. Fantastic. And who are you taking with you? <laughs> who would like to come with? I will go with you. Alrighty. Yeah, maybe and maybe like... your hunt, maybe your hunter is kind of covering you just in case. Yeah, I'll sort of I'll, I'll hold up the tranquil, sort of you know, cover cover the obvious the you okay. know, entry points and whatnot. So when you and a companion take a quiet moment to get a good vantage point and orient yourself, tell a story and then roll plus clever. On a hit, the GM will t the the Dino Master will tell you about two landmarks, one natural, one man made that you can see, and on a ten plus, they'll also show you where you are on the map. On a miss, you you discover an inim an imminent peril. So yeah, let's um. <clears throat> so let's engage the tell a story mechanic. So basically, when you tell a story, um, if you look at um. So when you tell a story, um. <clears throat> that's that's when you engage a move that tells you that tells you to tell a story. Basically, pick one of your prompts and tell that story. And then we'll make the move. Wait, prompts? Oh yeah, on yes, your. So, uh, I'm sorry. Um, so on yeah. your. So on the main. So on the character. On the character sheet, if you scroll down a bit under stats, there's a section called stories you tell, and there are five story prompts. Oh. Okay. So basically, pick one of those and basically tell tell a story based on that prompt um, to Mr. Swan and. And, and then we'll make a roll. Ooh, okay. These are and then, interesting. And then once you've told the story, make a check mark next to it. And then next time you're told to, to uh, you're, you're asked to tell a story, uh, pick a different prompt. Here we go. You know, everything, it's all about the poop. That's what my grandpa Joe, that's what he taught me. I mean, back in New Mexico growing up, I mean, he was a hunter, but like I, I still, what? He was a hunter like Biggs? Different sort of hunting, uh, well, along the same lines, but not big game hunting, you know, New Mexico hunting. But he taught me it's all about the poop, and I, I still apply that in my in my paleontological life, and I feel it served me well. And I tell you, the poop here, I did not expect it, <laughs> but it's a life lesson I carry with me always. I hope it proves that uh, serves me well here. It's definitely a, uh, we gotta be careful. That's what the poop here has shown me. Maybe it'll show us more. Is the poop like, like albino poop or something like that? <laughs> oh, did I not tell you the poop we saw back yeah. in the woods? Yeah. It's velociraptor poop. That poop should be extinct. Wow. I'm surprised we weren't eaten up. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I'm, I'm just, so uh, with that story, uh, I'm just going to say now that you're like, so what, what, what vantage point did you find? Did you, did you climb a tree? Did you just find a, find a, find a ridge or? You're up some place where you can kind of like survey the land a little bit. Tell us, like, so what? What did you do to get a vantage point? Uh, climb the fence. It's not electrical. It does have razor wire at the top, but that's but you know, that's what wire cutters are for, right? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to tell you. Um, I'm just going to tell you as a freebie. Now that you're up there. Um, what was penned in this? You can just you can just tell from like looking in the pen. Um, these were like large quadrupedal dinosaurs that you know were perhaps you know like you know, they were acting a bit like bison, but much bigger. Um, they're they're you know some kind of you know some some kind of some kind of big like you know bull shaped dinosaur. 
Um, and yeah, you can tell from the poop that whatever was in here were herbivor were herbivores, but they're still really big. <clears throat> um, and yeah, I was just and so I just I'm just going to give that one to you as a freebie. So let's so look at it was an herbivore in a pen in an electrical pen with razor wire to keep it yep. from getting out. Correct. That's 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 what you surmise. Um, so let's do the lay of the land move. So, Dr. Zano, um, I think you are the I think you are in the most advantageous position to make the roll. So why don't you go ahead and and also you were the one who told the story. So go ahead and roll two d six and add your clever. <clears throat> okay, so that's a five, and I believe your clever is two. Okay, so that makes it a seven, which is a hit. <clears throat> so on a hit, the GM, the, the, the DM will tell you about two landmarks, one natural, one man-made that you can see. And on, um, on a 10 plus, they'll also show you where you are on the map. Oh, I'm not gonna do that, but I'll tell you, um, tell you two landmarks you can clearly see. And one is, um, now that you're outside of the trees, you can, you can clearly see that, yeah, it's on the map, but you can clearly see that in the um, like to the northwest of you, there is a um, there is this like you know cone shaped island. It's clearly a volcanic island, and I'll, I'm also going to say that now that you're here, you probably didn't see it. It looks like there's it looks like there's some it looks like there's like smoke coming from the cone of the volcano, which you had not seen. I mean, you you knew there was a you knew there was a volcanic mountain on this island before, but it hadn't seem to be active. Now that you're seeing it, that volcano appears to be active. The second thing that you can see um, to the east of you through a break in the trees, um, you you see another built you see another building. This one's quite a bit taller. This one's you know maybe maybe three or four stories. Um, <clears throat> and that's that's to the west of you. You can't really make out too many details through the trees, but with that, you know, but with the, you know, once you've gotten up above, um, yeah, you can, you can definitely see like the top of a, the top of a tallish building. In fact, there's like an antenna mast that's on the, on the top of that tower. Oh, there's, <clears throat> there's something, there's an antenna over there. Our tools may not work, maybe do that volcano, but maybe we can get a signal from that antenna. Yeah, let, let's go see if we can do that. Maybe, okay. Maybe we can get a recording of what we've seen out too. And there's also this squat bunker that's like right, that's basically right here. It's just, uh, you know, it's maybe about a hundred yards away. Um, can I, <clears throat> is, can I do some to look, check for tracks to see where the, I don't know, where this giant dinosaur Headed if we're heading in the same direction or heading on in the opposite direction, so we can stay far away from it. Okay, I just that's your tracker. Uh, yeah, absolutely. When you study your immediate environment, environment for spore, roll plus clever. So yeah, absolutely. A four minus your clever is a three. Okay. As you are, um, so like, go go ahead and describe what you do. Uh, go go ahead and describe what you do here. Um, so how, as how, there, as, so this is this is what I would say. As there, as Doctor Zano is climbing up the fence, and as Swan is pr protecting from the lo from the lower region, uh, I will kind of like wander over and sort of begin to sort of look for tracks. Maybe pick up some dirt, taste it in my mouth. You know, um, I, what I imagine I would do is probably take my eye off of them, though. If I was protecting them with my tranquilizer gun, I imagine I would kind of you know, I would be doing something else. Are you going in? Are you like like cutting into the fence? Are you going into the enclosure, or are you looking around the the exterior perimeter? I would be looking on the exterior, I imagine. Okay. Awesome. 
So you wonder, uh, you know, so you're you're definitely following tracks, and these are tracks. These are unusual looking tracks. You're, you know, there's like got three toes. Um, it's got some kind of a claw, um, and you're following the tracks a bit, and the tracks seem to suddenly just stop, which is bizarre. And then you hear a little rustle. Um, and you look up, and there is a dinosaur that's about the size of a large dog um, <clears throat> that's in a branch of a tree, perhaps six, perhaps another like three feet above your head. So, you know, maybe 12 feet off the ground. It's looking down at you with two eyes. Um, and yeah, it's a velociraptor. Um, it's, it's getting down. It, it looks like it's getting ready to like pounce on you. What do you do? Um, I imagine I would sort of, you know, make a noise to the others. They'd be like, oh dear. And then I would, I don't know, try to roll out of the way b behind a tree if I could. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So looking at the, so looking at the basic moves, uh, this is, we, we are clearly engaging the peril moves. Um, <clears throat> so um basically um yeah so basically you're you're basically trying to uh trying to av to avoid this thing um i think you're going to be doing i think that's going to be run um you're trying you're trying to quickly get to a safe location <clears throat> whether that's you know you're not necessarily running across but you're you're trying to, you're you're trying to like roll away to to get away to get away from this thing um so yeah i think i think you are i think i think this is a run move so why don't you roll and add your fit okay i rolled a six i think which and my fit is and it looks like your fit is two so that is an eight so looking at the move, uh, okay, so on a, okay, so, um, <clears throat> so you get to choose, um, you either, so you get to choose. You have either moved to a new location, but you are being pursued, or you escape this threat only to only to find a new perilous situation. So I imagine I'll stick with the same situation, but I will run in towards the fenced area, towards the kind of like structure, presuming that it will somehow provide me with some uh, protection. But um, I will say, on, on our six, we have a, a dinosaur velociraptor. So, uh, so Biggs runs, so Biggs like runs out of the woods. Um, <clears throat> Biggs, are you running toward your friends or away from your friends? I mean, I'm running towards them, but I have this feeling that, um, uh, so Dr. Zano is on the top of the fence and Swan is right by the fence. I presume he'll be able to climb up. I just feel like if I run into the forest, I, I, I'm done for. I don't know. What am I? I'll just be all on my own. Uh, and I, this way I have some, perhaps, uh, you know, I can get behind a door or some other structure. And so you're like, so you're going to run, so you're going to run past him. You're going to, you're going to run toward that bunker structure. Towards that big open hole in the fence and possibly like jump in, you know? Oh, okay. I was going to say the, the hole in the fence was kind of like on the other side of this, this clearing. But there is a that there is the um, <clears throat> but you know there's a the bunker was only about a hundred yards a hundred yards away and you know there may be a door there the bunker then yeah the bunker then yeah whatever whatever the closest structure is okay <clears throat> so Biggs comes running out of the forest uh, past you and there appears to be a dinosaur chase there there appears to be a dinosaur chasing him um, it looks like it's you know maybe the size of a you know it's, it looks like it's you know it's you know, stands maybe, you know, its head is probably about four feet off the ground, um, like, like nose to tail, it's probably about 10 feet long. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to tell you, it's a velociraptor. 
Um, Swan, you're on the fence. Um, Dr. Zano, you're like on top of you're on top of the fence. I assume you've like cut away the razor wire. Um, so you've got a little bit of a height, but you're pretty sure these things can jump. Um, Biggs is running right toward you and there's a dinosaur hot on their heels. What, um, start with Mr. Swan, what are you doing? Mr. Swan is, I think he wants, he's, he's torn between capturing this thing for posterity and self-preservation. So I think he, he is going to attempt to um, climb a tree and use his sound boom as both to collect sound but also as potentially as a way to kind of keep it at bay. Okay, so you're trying to you're basically you're so you're you're basically trying to like if not if not escape the dinosaur like like escape the dinosaur's attention you're at least trying to like put yourself in a situation where it's it's not going to be interested in you is mm -hmm. okay yeah I feel like um, if I were to try to climb the fence then um, I wouldn't be able to operate my sound equipment and also okay. it might draw too much attention to the doctor. Got it. So I think that's going to be a, I, I think that's going to, um, so I guess I'm trying to figure out which of, trying to figure out which of two moves you're trying to, your, your, uh, would be appropriate here. One would be hide, which would mm -hmm. be basically, you know, I'm going over there. So the dinosaur won't notice me. Um, alternately there's the look over there move, which is you try to create a distraction um oh, so like draw draw a draw a to, to draw its attention elsewhere yeah i can always play like a different sound like um the chittering or or some other sound that we've recorded either here at a prior prior thing okay uh, to lure it away i like that are, are you trying to are you trying to attract it to you or are you trying to, to attract it elsewhere i'm trying to get it to go elsewhere like throw the okay. sound Okay, so that's going to be a that's going to be the look over there move. Um, when you try to create a when you distract when you create a distraction to protect a friend, and it's clear you're protecting Dr. Mm -hmm. Zano here. Uh, say what you're doing and roll plus clever. So you're going to be using your sound equipment to basically project a sound into the woods that's hopefully going to draw mm -hmm. the dinosaur's attention and go out there. Okay, right, sounds let's... good. Why don't you go ahead and roll plus clever? All right, so that's a plus two. All right, so did it just come up? I think so. So uh, four um, and a six plus two, so it's a 12. Or did it not come up? Um, I'm not seeing yours. Okay. I'm still seeing. Again. Let me seeing let me try again. Rogers. What do we get? There we go. Ah, there we go. Okay. That's a four plus two, which is a six. Four and two is a miss. six. Yes, sweet. <clears throat> okay, so on a miss, the best you can do is take the hit for your friend. Will you? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, Sean, were you trying to say something? If so, you're muted. No, I was just saying, don't, don't worry. I like, don't take the hit. I'll, I'll be fine. No, I'm, I, I have to take the hit. It's, it's part of the job. Okay, so you, um, so yeah, this is, so I guess this is what happens. Um, so I think what happens is, you you set up your sound equipment. Um, you know you like you, you like quick. You know you, you you climb up the tree. You, you quickly do the. You know, um, you know you 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 rig your speaker set and you and you you know you you try to blast a. Uh, you try to blast the sound into the like into the woods to hopefully you know like get an echo to get the you know to get the dinosaur back, but just as you just as you do that. Um, you bump the speaker so it's pointed right at the dinosaur. So it hears the sound and it tells exactly where it's coming from. The dinosaur stops, turns, looks right at you, <clears throat> uh, turns, uh, you know, stops, turns, starts charging toward you and leaps up into the tree. And I'm gonna call our second break right now. Okay. Nice. Uh, let's take five. Uh, let's take a five minute break. And let's, would people prefer 10? Hmm. Okay, let's take a five minute break. Um, I got eight minutes after, so see you in five.
And we're back. Um, a velociraptor is leaping up into the tree after Mr. Swan. Mr. Swan, what are you doing? I am going to, let's see. I feel like I'm inspired by um, some other thing that I was working on, like another project. Uh, and I feel, feel like I have some sort of elastic cable that makes me think of like a bungee jumping sort of thing. Uh, this is totally foolish. And I'm like at easily in my late 60s. Um, but I'm going to try to attach this cable to the tree and then fall out of the tree uh, in an attempt to avoid being attacked directly. And then hopefully the cable will pull me back up in the tree. So I'm expecting the, the raptor to jump. And I'm gonna try to avoid and then get back to the tree. It sounds like you're relying on sheer physicality to power through a difficult situation. Uh, sure. <laughs> so why don't you roll, hold on to my, hold on to your butt. <laughs> <laughs> is that plus fit? Uh, that is plus fit. All right, let's go with my worst stat. This is going to be fantastic. All right, so one, two, with a minus one. Sweet. I got a five. OK. Um, so here's what, so I'm going to, OK, cool. I'm going to switch back to. And my recording equipment has always been on since we got here, so if I die in a bad way that's going to be on tape hooray for viewership <laughs> so um dr zano you are on top of the fence and um you uh you know so you saw you saw bigs being chased you know being chased you know a few yards behind by this dino this, this velociraptor you just know it's a velociraptor because you are a famous paleontologist and you know these things. Um, you know, basically just as Biggs was like coming by you, just running by you, um, that's when um, Mr. Swan ran over to the tree, like quickly scrambled up a tree and used his sound equipment to make this like god awful blasting sound, which drew the dinosaur's attention, but it's, um, um, but it charged at him it jumped up. Uh, it looks like it, it looks like Mr. Swan, like you know, like hooked a bungee cord to the branch, the other to his belt, and jumped back. And um, but uh, you know, things are going on in the trees. Uh, what 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 are you doing? Um, I'd like to use my skill of dinosaur expert. Um, to so you identified some some more stuff about this dinosaur. Fantastic. Um, yeah, when you draw upon your knowledge to deal with a real life dinosaur, roll plus clever. So why don't you roll plus clever? Ha. Nice. You got a 12. So on a hit, you're able to identify its species, sex, and whether it's an herbivore or carnivore. Um, it's a velociraptor. Um, probably, you know, probably female. Hard to tell at, hard to tell at this range. Um, uh, definitely carnivore. Uh, you may also ask three of the questions from that list. Uh, I'll start with what is its drive? Um, what is its drive? Um, you're pretty you're pretty sure that this is I mean this this is a hunter. It's um, its drive is probably food um, to uh, catch other to catch other animals to eat. Um, Like, can I tell if it's um, 
currently trying to herd it's, us um, or if it's it, trying to just straight up hunt us or if it's trying to uh, protect its territory? Um, I'm going to say that it looks like it was trying to separate you and uh, so it could pick one, pick one of you off and it looks like it may have succeeded in that. Um, yeah, that was, that, that was its drive. You have two more questions. What is its weakness? What is its, what is its weakness? Um, um, they are, um, you're pretty sure that these things have very sensitive hearing and are probably, um, probably do not react well to loud noises. Which may be why it was, uh, which may be why it was trying to attack whatever, which may be why it was trying to attack the, uh, the sound that your sound engineer generated. But you may be able to use that to your advantage at some point. You have one more question. What are its moves? What are its moves? Yeah, I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read these out of the book. Um, it's a pack creature, so it generally hunts in a pack, meaning you probably need to be on the lookout for more of these. Uh, moves with amazing speed, can solve problems, um, and has razor sharp claws. Uh, So you've got some, you have some information. Um, Mr. Biggs, um, what are you doing? So now that um, I've got the one off of me, I'm going to drop to one knee, you know, put it into my sights with my tranquilizer dart um, and say, Swan, you fool, what are you doing? I'm trying to get it into the pen. And then I'm going to shoot one uh, shot off at the, at the Velociraptor. Okay. Just take a quick look at your moves. You've got tracker that's not going to apply. Also, just to say that you know that I was just running in fear, so it's I mean, there's no there's no fault here. So your uh, your your intention is to try to like force it into force it into the pen. My my intention is to shoot it with the uh, the tranquilizer dart. Shoot it with a tranq gun. Okay. Um. Okay, well, it sounds like um, just looking to see if the looking to see if this is the fight mechanic. Um, or if this is going to be just I'm just trying to figure out which move to engage here. Um, so basically you're so basically you're you're trying you're trying to hit it with a trank gun and try, you're gonna to try to knock knock this dinosaur out. Okay. Um, I think this is going to be just do it. Um, when you do something that you can usually do easily uh, but under pressure, and I'm going to say normally, you know, target shooting's not a problem. But you're trying to shoot a moving dinosaur into a like in uh, sh in in the shadows that's about to attack a friend of yours. So, um, tell us what will happen if you mess up. So what's what's basically what's what's gonna so if if this shot doesn't go well what's you know like what, like like what are the what are the consequences going to be? Well, I presume you know on something really bad maybe I would shoot Swan, but uh, on a typical shot, let's say if I just failed, um, it would go wide and yeah, the dinosaur, the Velociraptor would get the Swan. Okay. <clears throat> uh so let's go ahead and let, let's go ahead and do it just uh let's do it just do it um i think that's and so that's going to be a roll plus steady Ooh. okay you rolled an 11 on the dice and so i think i got a 12 totally yeah my steady's one okay yeah you got a 12 so yeah that Okay, on a twelve, yeah, absolutely. You, um, yeah, you hit the, um, 
you hit the dinosaur squarely, like uh, squarely in the neck. Um, and uh, the tranquilizer takes effect and it goes down. Why don't you tell us what that looks like? So I imagine it's kind of with its claws kind of climbing up the tree and then I, I shoot it in the neck um, and its head kind of begins to droop. It falls back, its legs kind of coming down last and it careens down to the ground in a big thump. Okay, and I think you hear two thumps as uh, the dinosaur, like as the dinosaur lands, and uh, Swan also like that that bungee cord. Um, you know, the cord probably held just fine. It's that hook that you hook that you that you hooked onto it um, that pulled right off the end of the cord, and you and you fell. Um, you fall like nine feet out of the tree, and you land and you land pretty hard. Yeah. Um, um, you are, uh, you are injured. Oh, definitely. Um, it's fine. So you have, uh, so you are, you are injured. So I'm going to give you the injury of, um, I'm going to say you landed on your back. Sure. And I'm going to give you the injury of cracked ribs. Ooh. Perfect. Oh yeah, I'm I'm moving with pain, labored breathing. Oh yeah, but um, grateful for what Biggs did. Um, yeah, you would otherwise. Still, yeah, yeah I that... still feel like I've got my boom out, like pointed in the direction of the raptor, just get its breathing. <laughs> well, it's knocked out. Like I'm always on the job. <laughs> It's, and then Biggs will sort of say, good on you, man. Good on you. You got the shot. I, I think you got the shot. I, th I think you got the shot, too. <sighs> so Mr. Swan is injured. Um, I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm just going to have the scene where it's the three of you, um, the three of you by this, for now at least, tranquilized, tranquilized velociraptor. Um, Dr. Zano, you know that these things tend to hunt in packs. None of you see anything around you. You think you've got a little time to breathe. Um, uh, let's. I'll ask each of you in kind. What? What? Um, like each of you in kind. What? What do you do, um, Dr. Zano? What do you do? I tell him to set up a shot. We're gonna we're gonna do a piece with the with the velociraptor. This is so much better than what we expected. These are live dinosaurs. So let me get this straight. Oh, this is out of character. Instead of like protecting ourselves, we're just gonna go to work. I love it. You've got a you've got a trick. What we're here for? <laughs> You're gonna do some footage. I love it. <laughs> All right. I love it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You take, yeah, you, 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 you get some, you get some great footage of like a live dinosaur, you know, and you, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're able to, um, you know, this, you know, the dinosaur is pretty out, um, you know, you're able to like, you know, check it out. You're doing to it. You're going to, you, you examine it a little bit. Um, you know, you get some great video, you get some great audio footage. Very, very cool. So while Dr. Zana's doing that, Mr. Biggs, what are you doing? Yes, I guess I'll check out the nearest structure. Um, uh, I think you said it was the bunker, perhaps. Bunker is the, the bunker is closest. Yeah, that's only a few hundred yards away. I'll kind of take a quick. I I'm not gonna like do a full on thing, but I'm gonna go and I don't know, see if there's any evidence of anything or doors open, anything like of the kind. Got it. So it's got a heavy, it's got a heavy steel door um, you know, with like a hand, you know, with like a. Um, you know, with, with, you know, with like a like a handle on it, uh, like, like one of those ADA compliant compliant handles. It's not a doorknob. Um, the building does seem to be locked. Um, there is a small narrow window. It's it's long. Um, it, it faces it faces into the pen. It's a long window on the, and the door is on the back, um, away from the pen. Um, it looks like the pen looks like the um, it looks like the fencing basically comes like around the building. So it's got like one end in. So it looks like it had one end of the 
building was facing into the pen and um, you'd have to cut through, you'd have to like get over the fence or cut through the fence to see it better. But from where you can see, it's got like a long narrow window. It's, you know, the window is maybe four feet long, but only about maybe six inches high. And it's, um, um, looks like it's, it's filled with bullet, it looks like, and the window, it looks like it's made of really thick glass. Uh, there is a single door on the other side. And like I said, it's the steel door uh, with a handle and that door is locked. Um, it's a sh it's a small building. It's you know single story, so it's only about um, I'll say the roof of the building is about was about flush with the with the fence, and there's more there's more just the roof of the building is just a massive razor wire. Um, Mr. Swan, what are you doing? Um, I mean, this is why we're here. So did did Doctor Zano mention that there would be more coming, or did anyone mention that? Or am I still oblivious? That's a question for Dr. Zano. Wouldn't mention anything. Doesn't want to spook you guys. I love it. <laughs> okay. So I feel like, yeah, we're getting I, the lighting, getting folks, it, getting I, all that set up. Go ahead. I need to pause for a sec. Uh, there is a delivery man knocking at my door. I'll be right back. And we're back. So, um, David, you were starting to say what Swan was doing before I had to um, interrupt? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that, I kind of want to do a story thing, but I don't know that that's appropriate this time. Uh, so we're, I feel like, yeah. I was gonna go say ahead. we're, um, uh, so the way, the way those stories work is when you do a move that includes, mm -hmm. basically it's, it's when you'd make a move that includes the tell a story uh, as part yeah. of it, which is most of the, which is most of the safety moves. Yeah. So I feel like it, the closest that I could see when there was maybe instruct, because I'm an old, old uh, cinema person. So I feel like I'm kind of talking through the shots and everything to the, the doctor, Zano, and if Biggs is around, I don't know if he's paying attention or not, because he's in, it's inspecting the the building but like kind of going through like this is what i'm planning to do this is the setup you know for optimal use of natural lighting and you know i'm getting getting some good feedback from the sounds around us uh, so that's kind of like i feel like i'm kind of walking them through that but if i were to actually use one of my story prompts let's see here what do we got it's down Oh, how, how's this? Because um, yeah, go ahead. because Biggs is Biggs isn't with you. Um, mm -hmm. How about you're running the camera, but that means that Dr. Zano has to has to do the audio even while she's oh. on camera. So you do some you do it's it's a little inefficient, but yeah. uh, you're you're kind of you're kind of instructor how to do that, and you're kind of yeah. like inter, intercutting. Okay. So yeah, that that's how yeah. we could do that's how we could do I, the the like instructor move. Yeah, so we're like kind of giving on the job training to the good doctor. And um, I, I, I see like rookie mistakes. And I'm like, no, that's just part of it. That's just part of it. We'll, and we can what are the, that what are, out. And what are gonna be the stakes here that this, this and I think, I, think, I think the stakes here, if things really go badly, I'm gonna say the audio, the audio becomes unuse, unusable. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. Let's do it. <laughs> Like, You'll still like have the video, this, but the audio, but the audio, know, but the know, audio here, know, the field audio will be un unusable. I know, and we'd have to like cut in some like fake audio to make up for it, and that's just not the same. You know, just do it all in voiceover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, definitely. So, yeah, I, I this is a teaching moment, uh, and I'm overcoming my gripes about what I'm seeing because this is someone who's their profession is studying dinosaurs and that that's great and uh, i'm going to say your injury does not come into play here so you're okay. not going to be rolling with disadvantage because you're injured because you know this cuz i'm just sort of standing there yeah you're just yeah, yeah you're just kind of standing still it, it hurts but you know yeah. you're not you're not physically okay. exerting yourself so you don't have to roll with disadvantage here perfect so let me see on that Instruct so uh, yeah so go ahead study and Okay, so, so yeah, so pick a so pick a story prompt and yeah. um, and 
tell a story yeah so um let's see i actually probably go goes back to you know oh so like when i first got into this business over 40 years ago you know and we were still using uh vhs tapes and uh you know the quality wasn't very good we had to do a lot of hand splicing in the wee hours of the morning and you know today kids just don't appreciate what we had to go through the, to earn our stripes you know in sound and video you know this digital this cloud that like there's really no like physicality to the work and uh thank you for uh standing in and doing the audio over there your commentary will be crucial to this uh potentially getting picked up for next year so um couldn't quite tell from that story which, which prompt were you using the kind of the infuriating one because the inefficient because of how things used to be I was kind of doing maybe more like a story to back how it used to be i love it Right. You know, doing how that all, how that, how video technology has gotten so much better. I don't have to deal with, uh, it is, don't have to deal has, with videotape. It has gotten better, but there's still like a uh, certain physical quality, tactile quality to what it used to be, chemicals and all. Nice. Okay. So, um, what was that? That's going to be roll plus steady. Okay. Let's do this. Right. Roll. All right, I got a nine. Okay. So on a nine, um, they don't do it quite as well as expected. Um, you may and you may choose one mm -hmm. uh, from the list. It takes longer. It opens them <laughs> up to danger. It opens you up to danger. Oh my goodness. Um. I think, let's see, it's, I think it's gonna open me up to danger because I'm so focused on uh, making sure that this audio takes. And I'm also like really focused to kind of ignore the pain. Like I'm just so like in the zone of work that I am oblivious to anything outside of that. I'm going to say I, I, I love it. And between I'm just going to I'm going to take it. It opens you plural up to danger here because um, how's this? So, you know, you're instructing Dr. Zahn on how to use the audio equipment. And so you're like cutting forth between actual filming, pausing, Futzing with the audio, doing that better. You go back to, mm -hmm. you're so focused on that. You didn't notice that the tranquilizer is wearing off and the dinosaur is, dinosaur has suddenly come around. Now we see its eyelid. Now it's, you know, its eyelids yeah. blink and it lifts its, you know, and it, it lifts, you know, it jerks a little and it lifts, you know, it suddenly jerks its head up and like, like looks, you know, it jerks its head up and it looks straight into the camera that you're that you're filming. Do and we that's see when you or, or just oh yeah, you, I mean yeah, you, oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna say, you know, I'm gonna say you know you're like I'm guessing that you're looking through you're looking through the sure. eyepiece. This is you know so where's you're looking through the Zeno's, eyepiece. So you, yeah, where's Doctor uh, Zano standing in regards to the dino? Um, if it's okay, mind if I set the scene? Oh yeah, go ahead. Doctor Zano is kneeling next to the dinosaur and is you know, like pointing to it and is like talking about the the anatomy of the talking about the anatomy of the of, of the, uh, um um of the velociraptor and maybe you have your hand resting on it and that's when you feel it that's when you feel its muscles tense and it move um dr zano how do you react and what do you do
They don't like loud noises. So and I've been messing with the sound equipment. And you know what happens when you put a microphone next to another microphone. Oh, you're gonna deliberately make some feedback? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, doing that before just saying run. <laughs> so I think you're basically gonna, so, so I think this is gonna basically be a look over there to make the, to basically distract the dinosaur by scaring it off with, with the sound so that you can, so that you can get away. Um, so, um, so yeah, I think this is going to be the. I think this is going to be the look over there. Yeah, does that make sense? I I take that back. I think this is going to be because that doesn't quite. Um, so you're basically you're trying. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't quite fit. I think this is going to be just do it. Um. So, um, which is kind of the catch all do, which is kind of the catch all of do some do something risky that isn't covered by one of the other moves. This isn't quite a distraction because the because the results don't really don't really match the fiction. You're not really fighting. Um, you're not powering through anything. So yeah, I think this I think this falls down to just do it. Um, so yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna. Make some feedback to scare to hopefully scare this dinosaur away. Um, what will happen if this doesn't work? This is like worst case scenario, right? Yeah, this is like worst case scenario. Like if you you, you totally botched the roll, what what's going to happen here? I've got a suggestion, but um, I've got a suggestion gonna, if you want one, but. Um, I was thinking uh, it makes the feedback, but instead of being incapacitated by it, um, the Velociraptor calls for help. Oh, I like that. That's even better than what I was going to, I was going to pose that, yo, know, you make the feedback and it doesn't like the noise. And instead of chasing it off, you've enraged it. But I like the idea of it. It calls for help, and like more velociraptors show up. I think that's even more dramatic. I love it. Okay, we've got stakes. We've got a desired result. Let's <laughs> roll plus steady. Uh, nice. Got a four. Ooh. So um, yeah, gen generally on a miss, the GM is or the, the Dino Master will describe what happens. So um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna narrate. So um, you bring your mic. So you know, so you can tell this. You suddenly realize that this dinosaur has come around, and it's like slowly turns its head to look at you. Um, you put the micro. You put your microphone next to the speaker and. It gets it gets the it 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 gets the feedback. Um, it startles the dinosaur. It like jumps to its feet, takes a few steps, take a few takes a few steps away, raises its head, and it makes this like sound. Um, like runs away from you a little bit, stops and turns. And that's when you hear rustling in the bushes from, you know, that's when you hear rustling from your left and from your right and from in front of you. Um, as you see four more velociraptors like come out of the woods. Um, what, what do you do? Run. 
I think that I think that's good. Um, okay, so um, I think everyone is going to run. So this is going to be the run move. Um, when some or all of you act together, for example, everyone runs for it, the hero in the worst position or the lowest relevant stat rolls. The rest of the heroes are assumed to succeed, perhaps with cuts and bruises. So um, I believe that's going to be Mr. Swan, who's got the two cracked ribs, is going to be the one that's in the worst position to try to run for it. And because you are injured, um, you're going to be because you're injured, I think your injury is going to happen here. So that means you're going to roll with disadvantage. And the way that works is you're going to roll 3d6 and throw out the highest. So you're going to add the two lowest dice and then your stat. Yep. OK. Let's do this. So roll plus fit with disadvantage. Yep. OK, let's see. Okay, so a, so three and so three and so three and three is four. oh right. Yep, it's a four. Ooh. Yep. Okay. I mean, it's actually. I mean, it's a five, but it's still a miss. Um, Three and three is six minus three and three is six minus, minus one. Or sorry, minus one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You're minus three and three is six minus one is five. It's still a miss. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me take a look at the move. On a miss, you get injured, and the threat is still around. Okay. I assume you're basically going to make a make a run for it toward the. I assume you're going to make a run for it toward the bunker. Towards the bunker. Yeah, I was going to ask if I could, like, if there's any way I can get the door open or, you know, and at the very least, I'm yelling, uh, I'm yelling, Swan, Dr. Zano, a full retreat is definitely in order. Um, I'm just going to say for the, I'm just going to say for the sake of, uh, for the sake of drama that um, you're fumbling at the door, uh, you know, there's like, Quick cuts between uh, the, the between the doctor and Mr. Swan, like like trying to get away. You know, Swan's clutching his ribs as he's, you know, Doctor Zano's definitely faster and is getting away. Cut between them and you know the dinosaur, you know, and this pack of Velociraptors coming at you. Cut to you know Mr. Mr. Biggs, who's uh, Mr. Bigsby, who's like you know, like trying to get this door open. I'm guessing you, I'm guessing you're, you're like using a. Oh wait, you're the hunter, not the engineer. So yeah, you've got like the You've got like this big old, big old like knife with the serrated thing on the back, and you're like jamming it in the knot, and uh, and yeah, you you get the door open just as Doctor Zano, just as Doctor Zano runs around the corner. You look behind you, and you realize that Swan's not right behind you. Um, camera cuts to Mister Swan, who's clearly wincing in pain as he um clearly wincing in pain as he um as he approaches <clears throat> and um so when a miss you get injured so um so when you get injured um so when you are grievously hurt or take an injury while you are already injured you're in bad shape Tell someone your darkest darkest secret or unfulfilled hope, then choose one. Let's say this. Um, you so so Biggs and Dr. Zano are by the door and they're like waiting and they're like waiting for you to come around. You come around, you come around the um, you know, you stagger around the corner. Um, and the dinosaurs are like right behind you. And one slashes you across the back. You stagger forward. I'm going to say that Biggs and Doctor Zano grab you, pull you into the pull you into the door, slam the door shut behind you, and you can hear the you can hear the dinosaurs like screeching and and clawing and like thudding against the door. Um, you're inside a basically this like this like spare utility room it's got a concrete floor it's got cinder block walls um it's got um it's got you know like like 
like fluorescent tube lights, but most of them are out. There's like one light that's on and it's flickering. Um, it's pretty much just a bare room. And then there's a second metal door. Um, this is not a very big room. It's like, you know, you know, it's like maybe 10 feet wide and like eight feet deep. Um, it looks like there had, looks like there, and there's, there's a, um, looks like there's like a sentry's desk or, or like a watchman's desk that's there. Um, just a simple steel desk with a, with a, with a swivel chair. Uh, there's nobody at it. Oh, and there's a, there is a computer terminal on it, but it, it's not on. There's a, and there's a secondary interior room. Um, Mr. Swan, you are, um, you've taken a second injury and that is, um, you know, you've, you've been like slashed by like one of the dinosaurs got a nasty slash across your back. So you're, you've got like this open gaping wound in your back and you still have the cracked ribs. We are going to do, um, so we are going to do the casualty move here. When you are grievously, grievously hurt or take an injury while you are already injured, you're in bad shape. <clears throat> Tell someone your darkest secret or unfulfilled hope and then choose one. And your choices are you get one, one final heroic act subject to the GM's discretion before you die or you're out of commission. You're unable to do anything, but your character will survive if the others can get you off the island in time. Either way, choose an unused playbook and create a new character. Okay, so I think what I'm leaning towards is, let's go down here. Um, unfulfilled hope probably is to have won some sort of um, important, you know, equivalent of like the Emmys or whatever for, you know, documentary. And I don't think I'm going to live to see that, you know, and I've been like working in this business for like 40 years and, uh, you know, to die in this sort of like island with dinosaurs just seems a little bit kind of dark humored <laughs> i never thought i'd go out like this <laughs> so i'm probably just talking about that with my compatriots about you know like you never know where life is going to lead you but maybe maybe one of you will carry on and, and deliver the film and and uh, we'll get that award Oh, so you get to, so either way, your character is going to be out of commission and we're going to uh, create, we're going to quickly create a new character for you. Um, so it is your choice. Do you want to do, be able to do one final heroic act um, or do you want to be out of commission and the other characters are going to basically, you know, you know, drag your, you know, drag your heavily injured body around with, with them to get you off the island. I do. Which, which do you wish to yeah, do? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what a heroic act would look like for my character at this point. Does I, anyone have a suggestion? I do have I a suggestion. Go on, please. No, I have I a suggestion. But say, I presume you you hand over the film and you say, "Get it, get it to the outside. Make sure that it's seen." You know that kind of thing where you're right, kind of right. like, "Yeah, I mean, just more or less what you said. That that would be the heroic act to me." And then we sort of take it and we're like, "Oh, we have to get this." We, and I, and I'm like, that. and I'm like the bait that helps you to escape from here is that what I, we're doing i was i was going to suggest just that that dr zano you know that these velociraptors are clever and they can figure things out because biggs you jammed open the door which means you broke the lock which means it's closed it's latched but if those velociraptors figure out how to open the latch they're going to open that door and they're going to come in um so maybe mr swan you volunteer to basically stay there and just like keep that keep that door handle up as long as you can to give your mm -hmm. friends time to get out of, to get sure. out of there before the dinosaurs get into the room. Would that be cool. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. I'm looking at the time. It's it's a couple of minutes before the top of the hour. Um, I would like to call another. I, I'd like to call. Let's let's call a ten minute break here. Um, we'll come back. I'm going to, 
I'm going to do a little bit of narration, and I'm going to hard frame. And I'm going to hard frame a new scene. Um, and um, David, if you want to think about um, like how you might want to have a new character that um, you know, because you're you're now in a facility. Um, you know, I think of some some obvious some you know an obvious choice would be to you have you you play a, you play the survivor. Or alternatively, you play a, uh, you know, you play some personnel that were, you know, that were part of this facility, um, you know, like, like a soldier would work or, you know, any of the playbooks would really work. It would be someone who was affiliated with a facility and will maybe fill in a little bit of backstory there or you want to. So think about what kind of character you want to play. Um, I will hard frame a new scene um, when we get back and we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, also, when we come back, um, this is going to be the start of Act Two. So, um, everyone, including um, including you, David, when you create your new character, uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and take your first advancement. So, um, I've got two minutes till. So, let's come back in ten minutes. Okay, and we are back for the final hour of Escape from Dino Island. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, David, did you come up with a character idea? Yeah, let's go with the soldier. Nice. I want him to be like a, uh, I guess, Soviet soldier. Since we have that Soviet angle going on here. You know, I... Um, yeah, I love it. So you've got like, so you're 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 a Russian so you're a Russian soldier. Um, I love it. Um, and I'm gonna say that. Um, so let's um, let's close Act Two with. Um, I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like narr narrate a bit of a scene here. Um, so Dr. Zano and Biggs, you. Um, you know, you open that interior door and you run in, and um, <clears throat> you know, at you know, you you say your goodbyes to uh, to you say your goodbyes to Mr. Swan, who tells you to like go go, make sure you get the footage out. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's there trying to you know he's there trying to um, like keep keep the door closed to give you as much time to get away, and um, you go through the other door, close it behind you. This door also does not seem to have a does not seem to have a lock. Um, and you're in, this looks like some kind of like power control room. Um, it's actually really, really hot in here. Um, there's like, you know, there's like, like there's like, like steam pipes, uh, you know, that come out of the ground. Um, it looks like there's only partial power here, but you're, you know, you look around here and you see that it looks like it looks like this station is being powered by some kind of geothermal energy, perhaps you know tapping into that, perhaps tapping into that volcano. Um, and you know you you go through another door and you close this one, and this one actually has a bar that you're able to put down. And just as you're putting down that other bar, you hear um, you know you hear the sound of. of the, you hear the shrieks of you hear the muffled shrieks of dinosaurs and 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 the screams of uh, and, and and human screams as you know presumably the dinosaurs get in. Um, it's not long thereafter. You hear them scraping at this door, but you're pretty sure this door is going to hold at least for a while. Um, you're poking around. In, you're poking around this facility. Um, yeah, you're able to get a couple of the computer screens on, and um, most everything's in Russian. Um, I'm just going to say for the sake of argument that one or both of you can read Russian just to make it, yeah, just to make it easier. But, you know, all the keyboards in Russian, all the signs are in Russian. Um, you know, when you fire up a computer, um, you know, the interface is, the interface is in Russian, but you, but, you know, you, but you can mostly make, you can mostly make sense of it. Um, you're able to bring up a, um, a map of the facilities on the island. Um, and you also see that there seem to be like some underground, um, seem to be like like underground electric, there seem to be underground, like there are other roadways where there are like some kind of underground electric 
um, electric trains that, that do connect them. So you can get from one facility to the other. Um, and there's two facilities that definitely grab, grab your attention. Um, one is, you know, one is called Communications Tower, and that seems to be the tower that you'd seen earlier that has that antenna off. It's not too far. It's like one step. It's like one stop away from here, on that, you know, on that like electric subway tunnel thing. And then there's a second one that is called, um, <clears throat> and there's a, there's another one that's simply called Gate. Um, while you're, you know, while you are like, you know, it's been like, it's been a few minutes since you've like gathered this information when, um, you know, you hear the, uh, you know, <clears throat> you hear the click of, of a rifle bolt being, uh, being armed and a, uh, and a, and another person steps into the room. And that would be our new character. Yeah, so Sanjay comes in. He looks stern, but pale, maybe a little shaken. He's wearing his uniform with the kind of Russian beret. And uh, he probably says uh, in, you know, his less practiced English, who are you and what are you doing here? We are we are explorers. We we have come to 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 see what is on this island. I had heard that there was not even a man here until up until a few years ago. I, explain yourself. Who are you? I am first class sergeant in the Russian army, and this is the island of hell. That we could clearly tell. We, we, we just lost one of our good men, Mr. Swan. It was a terrible thing. He was just eaten down the way. Uh, worst, worst thing I've ever seen. And I've been on some hunts. I, I've hunted great Caledonian boars and, and, and giant tigers. Things you couldn't even imagine. But, but dinosaurs, what is this man? It is madness. It is science gone awry. What a madness. Dr. Sano, what do you have to say? no idea how are, how are there people here at all how it's just how like you come complete here? disbelief like we've been here we've been monitoring the situation which is it, it is impossible Wait. russian knew about this outpost the entire time the russians know everything So I'm going to say I'm they just came gonna... in on a Russian military ship. Why didn't they tell us? Decommissioned. It was in private hands. That was a Soviet. That was not Russian. <laughs> yeah, decommissioned. Yeah, this is, yeah. The like Yeltsin sold that off. Yeltsin sold that off in the '90s. Um, not true Russian. I'm going to. Uh, so I'm going to say, um, so Sanjay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to fill you in on a little bit. You've been here for, you know, you've been here for about a year. Um, it's, uh, you're, you're part of an act. You are part of, uh, you, you were basically, you're part of the security team that was providing, um, you know, basically providing protection for this scientific facility that you kind of didn't really understand. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it was some kind of, um, it was some kind of like, from what you gathered, it was some kind of like, like physics research that was working on, um, you know, that was like working with tachyons or something like that. Um, eh, I don't know. Um, but about six months ago, um, you know, about six months ago, there were actual dinosaurs. Like you'd never seen dinosaurs before, but now there are suddenly dinosaurs on this island. And you, you know, and you know, you you were, uh, you and your superiors were told to basically, you know, like erect more defenses around the around the research facility and, um, you know, protect the facility from these dinosaurs, wherever they came from. So, let me just clarify. So, is it after post tachyon dinosaurs appeared, 
or the, yeah, there were okay. Yeah, so, so the scientists probably, so you were you were here for the for the first six months. You know, the, the scientists were working right. on some kind of physics thing, tachyon. Right. I don't know. Right. It's, it's like you know those eggheads are doing something. I'm exactly. here. To, you know, we're just here to as long as it we're takes just here for, down the the U.S. We're okay with it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, as long as as long as we stay ahead of both the U.S. and the Chinese, we're good. Yeah. Um. Probably. Probably. Um. You know. If, Dr. Zano, does Dr. Zano wear like a, any kind of um, indication that that they're like, you know, a scientist or anything like that, or or not? Um, I mean, she looks like a paleontologist, like archaeologist, like so, like the digging outfit type clothing, <laughs> but nothing to say like she's a scientist per se okay would you be I would you be in if, I, I was just gonna i was just gonna pose you know because you're like on part of a tv crew would you be wearing something that would like you know indicate your position on on the on the show like i don't know like some kind of a like a jumpsuit or a safari suit or something like that oh thinking, or like a logo from the show oh yeah the oh, yeah. show's logo on your <laughs> What, what was the name of the show? Maybe, maybe there's like a name tag on on her lapel that's like Dr. Lindsay Zano. And like on the back of all of our shirts is like the logo for the for the show. Okay. I think well, I think when when you come into more of the light uh, and he sees that, he's like, what was the name of the show again? What did we decide it was on? Maddox, right? It was Maddox. Maddox colon. The colon. Real Maddox lost. colon the real lost, real lost world. world yeah. uh, which is season know, like he, two, which is season two of Maddox. He's like, you know, and then he just starts rambling in Russian. Like, I love that show. I can't believe you're here. <laughs> and and like, oh, the real Dr. Zano, you know, like I'm your biggest fan, you know. I love it. And then and because then he natters on about the the tachyons and the dinosaurs. He has no idea what's going on, but he's so reassured that the show was brought here to solve this puzzle. So um, you know a couple. So I'm just going to say, Sanjay, you know a couple of things. You know, um, you know that the communications tower has a has a signal jammer, so that um, basically this this so that. Um, Whatever broadcasts that this that you do are, can't be picked up, and if anyone stumbles on the island, they're not going to be able to they're not going to be able to um, send a signal out. The second thing you know is that, um, and the second thing you know is that in the last couple of, is that there was some kind of there was some kind of accident, and the scientists and most of the um, the scientists and most of the security detail. Um, left the island a few days ago, but they left a small team behind to basically guard the place with assurances that they were going to be sending someone back to pick you up. Um, assurances. Um, you were part of a you were part of a small team of six that remained, but you had a tangle with dinosaurs. You had a tangle with um, you had a tangle with a, a pack of velociraptors and you're the only survivor. And well, you've been holding, would, and you've and you've hold, and you've been holding up here for a little while, um, but you're glad to see other people because you you were afraid to go on by your by yourself, but now now that there are people here, yeah, I would relay this to these other two in part because I'm probably lonely and scared, and they are people. <laughs> and you don't you don't know of any other anyone else that's still on the island. You thought it was just right. your team of six that was that remained right. behind, and did, did I see my dead. other? Okay, I saw the others die. So I yeah, I'm gonna dead. I'm gonna say that you're 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 basically on patrol at one point, and you sure. you were attacked by a pack of by a pack of velociraptors, and you were the only one who was able to escape. Okay, have have I experienced or seen other dinosaurs besides velociraptors? I mean, there's that one in the pen. You have. You knew that the in the pen um, that mm -hmm. had been there um, had been a small herd of of triceratops. You know, like bull like things with a crest yeah. and three horns. Yep. Um, and you have seen some flying dinosaurs. They aren't really dinosaurs. You've seen some pterosaurs flying in the sky. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell the, the good doctor about all of these things because I watch your show. And um, the other thing that you know is that um, not is that what made the scientists like leave was 
the island started having earthquakes a few days ago and they've been increasing in frequency and severity as time goes on. You think you heard one of them say something along the lines of the geothermal equipment, like they dug, they dug one of the geothermal wells too deep and that, the, and that now the volcano is active again. Um, and as you're relaying this, there's an earthquake. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I was just going to ask, when was the last one? <laughs> Perfect. So, do we need to make a move for earthquake survival? Nope, not at this time. This is just okay. this is just for dramatic effect. Okay. Shaky cam. <clears throat> um, again, because we're we're starting to run low on time. Um, Basically, at this point, you need to figure out how to how to get off this island because you're pretty sure that this you're pretty sure that the volcano is going to blow soon, and that's why that's why everyone left the island. So we'll say, Doc, Doctor Zano, I, I feel as if we have uh, enough film recording. Sanjay, you look like, you look like you're good with a rifle. I, you're definitely with us. We're trying to find a way off of this island. The plan is to escape via a research vessel, six people can fit. There's only three of us, and perhaps as a pilot, I imagine, that's a room for two more if we pick up anyone else. But I say we get out of here as quickly as possible. Ah. Now, you know that there is, um, now that you know that, and Anja, you know, you know that this communications tower, that's, that's where the signal jamming is coming from. Yeah. And there is well, um, yeah. basically, and there's basically two ways to get there. You can go over, you you can go over land. There's, you know, there's, you know, there, there's a pretty rough road that goes there, mm -hmm. and you know where the, and you know, you know where there's a, you know where there's a jeep. Uh, so you could try driving there, or you could try to take the, or you could try to take the underground electric train over there. Um, the latter is the latter would definitely be safer, except that you know there's an earthquake going on now, and you know maybe being in underground tunnels is not such a great idea if there's if there are earthquakes. Right. Or if you go um, overland, um, or if you go overland, you're you know pr presumably subject to dinosaur attacks. Sure. Is there a third option, such as a zip line between here and the tower, that gonna... might put us near the, the flying non-dinosaurs? Um, zip line. I'm thinking they probably wouldn't have set up a zip line. Okay. They're probably it's probably far enough away that uh, you know, normally they would have they would have taken the, you know, they would have taken their like underground tram or they would have taken sure. a, taken a road. Okay. Uh, I guess the jeep seems the most practical way. Uh, and you know, Sanjay would ask like, uh, Biggs if he's a better driver or shot. I could take the wheel. You look like you have the, the assault rifle. You, 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 can, right. you, can, you can take second. All right. I will, I will try to keep the dinosaurs at bay. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so there's a, uh, so yeah, there's, you know, basically there, there's an underground walkway to a second uh, to a second facility. It's partially camouflaged, um, and yeah, there's a yeah there's there, there's a Russian off road there's a Russian off road vehicle in there. Um, you know you're able to open you know, you're op you open the you know you open the bulkhead and you like drive out onto the onto the road and um, you start driving toward the communications tower. Um, and I'm going to say as you're and, and again. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to frame these scenes pretty fast now because we're we are kind of running out of time. Uh, I would mm -hmm. normally like to let these breathe a little more. Um, so you're 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 driving down the road. You're driving down the road through this you know boreal forest, um, and um, I'm going to say um, you know, and and the forest is pretty dense on either side. You're driving. You come over it. You come over the hill, and there is a triceratops just standing in the middle of the road, looking like, you know, just he's just kind of standing in the middle of the road, blocking your way. You're about halfway to the. You're about halfway to the communications tower. What do you do? I'll use my knowledge. I know expert. Fantastic. Go ahead and roll plus clever.
Eight. Eight. Okay. So um, on a hit, you identified species. Uh, okay, it is a triceratops. Um, I'll say this one is. I'll, I'll say this one's female. Um, it is an herbivore, although even although like a rhino, they're pretty dangerous. They got these. They got these big horns, and they're. Um, you probably wouldn't want to fight one, even though it's even though it is indeed a, an herbivore. Uh, you may ask one of those questions. What is its drive? What is its drive? Let me look up the. Let me look up. Let me look up the dinosaurs. We know why it's here. We may know how we can get it to move. Uh, what is its drive? Um, their main drive is to defend their young. Um, yeah, their their main drive their main drive is to defend their young. Um, and I'm going to say they. Um, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you their moves. You know they um, they probably can charge, um, and they've got those big horns. So this is basically like a like an oversized bull. And in this scene is um, I'm going to relate a personal story from from my personal life. There was one time I was driving in northern New Hampshire, and I came across a and I came across a, and I went over a uh, I went over a hill, and there standing in the middle of the highway was a moose. Moose are much, much, much bigger than you expect. These, they're, they're about 10 feet tall to the top of their antlers. And they weigh, then they weigh at least, then they weighed at least as much as my car. What did I do? I waited there for 45 minutes for it to finally wander away. But you're under a bit of a time pressure here. Because as you're sitting there wondering what to do, the ground shakes again, and looking over in the looking over in the distance, out in the distance, you hear a um, you hear the sound of an explosion, and you you see like a big ash cloud coming up uh, coming up from the from the volcano, and the and the and the triceratops stops. It looks in that direction. And then it looks back down and starts eating some more of the grass. What do you do? Do we have any, is there anything in the Jeep that can help us like flares or, uh, you know, distracting type stuff? Do there can, do we have, there can absolutely do we have, be something like that. Do we have other food too <laughs> for it? I have some jerky. I no, I'm listed it, on my character sheet, but it's, it's mine. It's not, it not like that. <laughs> Yeah. This is not this is not a game about inventory tracking. So if it makes sense for you to have it, you have it. So I'm going to say sure. It makes total sense for you to have like road flares or even a flare gun or you know, I mean this is a military vehicle if you want to say that there's um if you, if you want to say that there were, you know, other weapons in this jeep, it make if it would make sense to have it, you you have them. Uh yeah, so if we can break out the flare gun, then and, and, I don't know, and I say, Doctor Sano, what should we say? Shall we distract it? And, and maybe I'll just hand it to you. I don't know. A, a decent shot. So you're well, going to try to like flare gun. It probably has ground flares, right? Yep. But imagine something like that. Yeah. If we put some ground flares down. It might get spooked and just run away. Okay, so you're going to try to distract the dinosaur to get it to go where you want it to go. Okay, yeah. uh, that is going to be a look over there move. Um, <clears throat> let's see, when all of you are acting together, um, yeah, this is more of an individual thing. Um, yeah, you're, you're creating a distraction to try to get it to, to, you're trying to draw the dinosaur's attention where you intend. Uh, so who's, who's taking this action? And describe how you're doing it with these flares. Again, whether you're using a flare gun or a road flare, um, like, tell us what this looks like. And who wants to take lead on this? I imagine the doctor, since you know more about what the triceratops would do, would want, would not like. 
that would make sense. So uh, putting down the flares like in front of the truck and kind of in a line towards um, like where I'd want the, to lead the triceratops. Okay. Okay, cool. And um, yeah, awesome. So why don't you go ahead and roll plus clever? 10. That's a 10. Okay, you draw the dinosaur's attention where you intended. You are safe. So yeah, you're able to uh, you're able to get the you're able to get this thing to move off the to move off the road. Um, why don't you tell us what that looks like? Slow, but it uh, it sees the flares and kind of shies away. It's like ah, too bright, and it just steadily plods its way off to find grass in a less bright area. <laughs> Got it. And once it's off the road, you gun it, um, and you make it to the, um, and you and you make it to the make it to the communications array. Um, looking at time here. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that you. Um, again, I'm just going. I'm just going to hard frame this scene. Uh, there's a scene of you like, you know, like like driving past, driving up to the, you know, driving up to this communications tower. The three of you hopping out. Uh, Sanjay uh, lets you into the tower, um, and you look up and you see roosting on like roosting on the top of this tower are are four pterosaurs. Um, you know, one kind of looks down at you and like raises his head and squawks just as there's another earthquake. And this is when some of that volcanic ash is starting to fall down around you. Um, and you get into the, you get into the communications control room and um, what, so what's your plan in the communications? Uh, are you going to try to signal for a rescue? You're just going to try to turn things off? I imagine we try to signal to the 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 research submarine to come in so to get us. I perhaps I would imagine, right, guys? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. And if, uh, if we need to turn off the signal to do so, then that would be the order. Okay, you turn off the signal and you signal. So I'm gonna. So if we want to go over to the map, um, I'm going to let's duplicate this. That's a copy. Would we want to try the uh, helicopter first? Sure, yeah. Just because it could make a beeline to us and we don't have to go to the uh, shore again. Okay, so you're going to try to signal the helicopter. And I'm just going to say that um, near the, I'm just, I'm just going to say for the sake of convenience, around the, there's a big clearing around the, around the communication tower, and there's a big old helipad right there. Um, So okay, so you signal. So you're gonna. So you're gonna signal for the helicopter rather than the uh, rather than the submarine. Awesome. Um, you know, there's another. Um, and so you signal the helicopter. You give them the coordinates, and just at that, there's another. There's another like earthquake, and at that point, the lights go off in the building. Um, you fumble your way back out of the building, and you're basically um, like you're you're basically waiting there for for the helicopter to land. Um, and at this point, um, you know, at this point, the earthquakes are are happening more often. Um, you see a glow from the you see a glow from the volcano. Um, you know, there's clearly lava coming out of the there's clearly lava that's starting to roll down starting to flow down the sides of the volcano. I mean, you know, you're at least half a mile, it, it, you know, it's at least, you know, it's like a mile away. So you're not like in immediate danger of lava, but there's this ash in the air um, that's making visibility difficult. And uh, it's probably gonna make landing this, landing this helicopter difficult. Um, but a few minutes later, this, you know, the helicopter like comes out, of, you know, like you hear the approaching engines and it lands on the helipad. Um, 
there's a mad scramble aboard the hell um and then finally um but as the helicopter lands it spooks these pterosaurs and these pterosaurs jump up and they start you know and they're basically going to be um you know and these pterosaurs are um they're, they're they're basically like swooping down at you um and they're they're clearly agitated by both the sound of the helicopter and this and this volcanism that's going on so you're going to need to basically run the gauntlet to get between uh uh to get from where you are to the you know few hundred for like you know a couple of hundred yards to get to your waiting chopper um how do you want to is do it, that is it possible for sanjay to take positions to shoot them if not to disable them to at least clear them far enough away for us to get there easier yeah so you're basically you're going to shoot at them to basically like just cover, bas covering fire i don't know yeah absolutely so you're basically you're basically you're basically trying to direct the direct them so that they don't um you're basically trying to shoot at them so that they so they don't come like so that they leave you alone yeah. So we okay. Get away. Yep. So that that's going to be a look over there move. To you're going to be distracting dinosaurs again. Um, okay. So you're covering your. So you are covering your friend's escape, mm -hmm. and then presumably you're going to run after them as well. So this is going to be a role plus clever. That is not my strongest trait. All right. Let's take that. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably also like ordering in mostly Russian orders to my compatriots to get to the chapter, just because that's my reflex. Got it. And I was going to um, say, you can, I mean, mm -hmm. and I mean, you totally recognize this, the sound of this chopper. You've, you've jumped out, you've jumped out of choppers just like this in the past. So do um, I know that they have a, a, uh, a ladder thing or a cable that they can throw out in case they need to start taking off, but we still want to get on? They would totally have that sort of thing. Sweet. All right. But yeah, cool, they, they, they come down. They they but they do actually set down, but the rotors the okay. rotor's still going, so they can power okay. right back up and take right. off. Because with down. an earthquake, they may not actually want to be on the on the ground. Uh all right. So I'm gonna roll this with a minus one. Got an eight. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Right. So pow, 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 pow. you get um okay, so um Mr. Biggs and Dr. Zano get aboard the chopper. Um, I'm going to say at this point, you're kind of like backing away with like your rifle in the air. Um, mm -hmm. And that's when this flock of, that's when this flock of pterosaurs notices you and they're like dive bombing at you. What do you do? Love it. Um, I am going to, uh, of course, I have a Russian grenade and I'm going to throw this into the center mass of this and then do a dramatic tumble away from the blast, hopefully. I think this is a, this is, this is clearly fight. Yeah. So when you fight for your life, roll without a bonus or plus one if you have a weapon. You, act, you absolutely have uh, a weapon. So go ahead and roll plus one. Sweet. Okay. Did it? I didn't do anything. I didn't, right, I didn't see it. Do that. All right, I got a nine. Nine. Okay. So on a hit, you buy a precious moment for someone to help for someone. Um, on a seven to nine, choose. On a seven to nine, choose one. On a ten plus plus both. Uh, so you can choose. You aren't injured, or you injure the enemy, or you injure the enemy. I'm totally injuring the enemy. Okay. Um, how are you? Uh, I'm going to say you you take an injury, but I'll let you decide yeah. how you get injured in this. Um. What I think would be cool is it, because of the earthquake and everything, if like, um, like, like I roll like as some uneven ground comes up from the quakes. So I like slam into, uh, so I probably like dislocate my shoulder or something on the roll. And I'm like, basically like can't use my, my one arm and I'm sort of like recovering and sort of absently Got trying to get to the helicopter. Got it. You know, you've got your, your, you got, yeah, you, your, your, let's say your left arm is useless. Mm -hmm. You've got an AK. It's kind of hard to use an AK one handed, but you're doing your best. That's right. I, I am sticking that thing 
in my armpit and trying to use it. Yeah. Or I mean, if you want to say you drop that and you draw, you, you just drop the rifle and you just you just draw you just draw a pistol. That that also works. Oh, I'm sure you've got I one of them too. I think actually a survival knife would be cooler. Fantastic. <laughs> um, look, the look is key here for the do so, doctor nerd. Sure. <clears throat> So I, I think we're going to end. So I think I'm going to end this on a, on a dramatic moment. Um, so Sanjay is like is like backing up with his, you know, with his with his with his knife. Um, you know, you, you hear crackle. You hear crackle over your walkie talkie with the, um, you know, which which, you know, yours yours works because, hey, it's another, you know, they're broadcasting on Russian military on Russian military channels. Um, you hear the, the pilot on the you hear the pilot of the helicopter say something to the effect of, we're taking off, we're taking off now, grab the ladder. Um, the, uh, the helicopter takes off like a rope ladder comes down. Um, you kind of like grab it with, kind of grab it with one hand as the- I put the knife in my mouth. Yeah. As the chopper lifts off, flies toward the camera, flies toward the camera, you know, as, as behind it, there's a explosion from the, from the volcano as, uh, you know, like, like magma and, and ash come out, <clears throat> you know, the, the chopper flies by and, you know, we see Sanjay like, you know, come by the camera and then chase and then chasing the, chasing the chopper are two, are two pterosaurs. <laughs> Roll credits. <laughs> post well credits. Done. Yeah. Post, post credit sequence. Epilogues. We have time for that. Uh, let me see. Where is this stuff on epilogue? Got the footage, guys. <laughs> A daring escape. <clears throat> okay, so if the heroes escape, make sure to take a moment to describe it. I think I just did. Safe at last. When you escape the island, roll plus the number of stories you told over the course of the adventure. So let's go. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's go around. Let's start with Doctor Zano. You haven't had some. You haven't had spotlight time in a bit. Um, so let's see. We um, Doctor Zano. I think you told. Um, yeah, I think you told one story. So go ahead and roll plus one, and let's see what let's see what we get. Seven. You got a seven. <clears throat> so on a seven to nine, describe something that you will carry with you from your time on the island. You know, an image or a memory or possible or possibly some or possibly a physical souvenir that you will carry with you. I stole something from the facility that we were in. Uh, <clears throat> some sort of technology uh, just to, you know, prove to myself and everyone else that like this actually happened and this place does exist. And I like, and I like, and it has. I like if it would have like the logo of whatever the whatever the organization was that had that had like done this. We didn't we didn't have time to really describe that, but yeah, it's got some like, you know, it, it's got a it's you know it's got like a it's got kind of a sinister high tech ish logo, and then and then Russian letters. So it's the name of something. But yeah, you've you've grabbed you, you have that. Um. And what do you use that for once you're back? So personally, it's just a reminder that, you know, I, I've always gone through worse. Like I survived this um, and I could always go back as long as the volcano is not active. Uh, the dinosaurs will probably still be there and I there's more research to be done. So we should bring a team back, you know, 
it's it's a real thing the place does exist this is my proof or at least it did exist before the before the volcano blew right i love it uh biggs um why don't you go ahead? I mean, you you definitely you didn't engage a move that where you told stories, but you definitely told some stories of your past. So why don't you go ahead and roll plus one for your epilogue? So I rolled a nine plus one is ten. Nice. So on a ten, describe something good that happens to or because of you as a result of your time on the island. So what what good comes of this experience? So what good the good that comes to the experience is that um, when we publish the video of the Velociraptor, um, it is an immediate success, and the Maddox TV show begins to soar in ratings. We are on TikTok, we're on Snapchat, we're on all the platforms. Everyone's watching us, um, and we become huge. Dr. Zana was a name all throughout you know the world. Um, and it is Mr. Swan's efforts that I often reflect on, that last moment in which he held the door, that last moment in which he allowed us to kind of make our escape and, and publish this amazing footage for the world to see that I, that I hold and that I remember. And that's the good that comes from it, that his death is not in vain. I love it. Oh. Oh, I love it. That's so sweet. I, I, I was going to have uh, I, I was going to have David roll for Sanjay or for roll roll for roll for Swan to uh, because there's a there's an epilogue for people that didn't make it but that was awesome so that, that totally works. Um, we didn't get a lot of Sanjay's backstory but uh, you still absolutely get an epilogue so why don't you go ahead and um, why don't you go ahead and roll flat just roll two d six. Let's see what we got. I got a four. Okay. On a miss, describe something bad that happens to or because of you as a result of your time on the island. Um, so I think what... Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, what, I thought of a cool one, but go for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think what happens is um, he, he is then hunted down because he's a loose end from this thing that wasn't supposed to exist. And so the people who said they were going to come back for him do come back for him, but not as intended. And I don't know if we actually see it happen, but there's at least a, you know, like gun in the face sort of moment. And we don't know what happens that he just, he's disappeared is what I was thinking. What Love was your it. idea? Oh, uh, more or less the same thing that because that, you know, because this, this video aired, um, it showed your, it showed your face and yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that, you know, that, that anger, that angered your superiors. Yep. But yeah, that, that, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. And that folks was escape from Dino Island. I had a blast. This is a great story. Um, thank, you. thank you all. Thank you everyone. Um, I hope folks had fun. Um, I certainly did. Um, we've got a little bit of time left. Um, I normally like to do a, um, a little debrief exercise called Stars and Wishes, um, but I'm going to do that after I pause, after I pause, after I end the recording because that that's for us. That's not that's not for the viewers. So um, anyone who happened to be watching this, um, thanks for watching. Um, and this was Escape from Dino Island uh, by Sam Tung and Sam Roberts. Um, if you're interested in picking up a copy of the game, um, it's on itch.io. Just go to itch.io and just look for Escape from Dino Island and you'll find it. Um, thanks, everybody. 